final word. The final yeah. word. What more do you want? What <laughs> <sighs> more? Come on, Cowboy Day. <sighs> nah, nah, nah. Uh. Final word. Why can't word. we just have a normal, <laughs> normal offseason, bro? Man, I take this offseason versus the the ones we used to have in the past, though. Nah, bro, I'm taking last year's offseason. Me too. I'm Yo, taking bro. last year, bro. Every time. Last year was good. Yeah, it was. Quiet. <laughs> it, was it was real good. good. It was real. We got spoiled, man. The I'm talking about the Gary, remember the Gary big, days offseason, though. Word. Somebody getting shot. Well, um, we, we had a good offseason last season because they was all in. They choked. So now we got a bad offseason. Yeah. I'm going to ask y'all this. I've been, I've been scratching my mind with this. How much do y'all value AP All Pros? Because people have been saying, hey, man, we had nine All Pros. How much do y'all value AP All Pros versus NFL All Pros, etc.? What does that matter if we keep failing in the playoffs, dog? Nobody cares about all pros on the playoffs. Nobody cares about all pros. And you win in these playoffs. All pros don't matter. I think I know what you We had all pros that, in 2007. I think I know We had all pros that. in 07. 13 of them. Pro bowlers. Yeah. Lost. We had, yeah, we had. I don't hear that. It's still a record. That record still has still record. not been broken. The final uh, it's a record, but it don't matter. Yeah, but but big is where he was going. The big picture of what he was saying, because I think I heard that too. Because yeah, because see, I've been hearing that where people be basically been saying that about how many all pros do Dak need? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah, no, I'm not even. I'm not, no, I'm no, no, I'm not. Oh, it's cool. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going at that angle. But you know what? Three years all pros, Pro Bowlers. What? I'm tired of what we got. Three years of playoffs. I don't. I, I don't. I don't want to hear these excuses. Because remember, boss. Remember, boss. When we had this discussion last year, when Keller Moore was dismissed, I said, "Okay, now, boss and law and all y'all." I said, well, "There ain't gonna be no excuses this year when it's just McCarthy and Dak." You said, "There ain't no excuses." So what happened? They failed. They had everything in their Dak had his best year, and they failed again. So there ain't no excuses. So I don't want to hear none of that. Hey, I feel you. no, no wee woo sauce. But let, let me ask uh, Jay Tuck in you, big game, James. Since y'all been in the boxing ring, okay. Mm -mm. How mm -hmm. necessary is the jab versus the uh, hook? Uh oh, the jab is the most important punch. The set jab is up. the most important. Set it up. So, so, so we had nothing to set up the run. Nothing to set up to stop the run. <laughs> Give is that what you're using? All all power, you always got excuses. All power, all you always got an excuse. You always got an excuse, dog. I love you, law, but you always got an excuse, dog. I love you, law, but you always got an excuse. You always got an excuse. You had these last three years. You had these last three years, especially 2022, and you had an opportune time to take over this. And you had, and like I said, I'm not taking up for these Joneses at all. But I they do. did it, and we talked about it on the fi final word many times when I said this was their all-in season, this past season. Look what everything they did, and Dallas failed, so they're going back to their old ways. So ain't nobody trying to hear no excuses of all pros or jabs and punches or nothing like that. Get it done. He ain't giving no excuses, big. Right, right, right. He yeah, he like, is. Big, yeah, you to are. Today, you are too right. giving us here. I am ready to fight. I'm ready for war today. I'm ready for war. I ain't been on here. I love y'all. Remember, I love y'all. This is love. I love y'all. This is in love. I can't tell. This is in love. This is in love. This is in love. Evil world we live in. It's an evil world. Sometimes you just want to run it up. Time to check us out. Maybe I just wanna run it up. Count that too, count it up, yeah. count it up, count it up, count it up. Lately I just wanna run it up. Need them ones.
I need them fives, need them tens I need that change to the safe, got blues inside Greens and pinks, it's all the same I still say and roll my change Take some losses when I play, charge, charge it to the game I'm with L, yeah, I'm with T-Black, I'm with Revin now I'm with Bay, yeah, I'm with J, yeah, I'm oh, with Chuck yeah. now Still the same, I switch your size, now it's about loyalty Use the size off for the bag and that's worth more to me I mix Nike with way. designer, I experiment mm. You just rock what's on the shelf and I'm not feeling it Search for the one, but baby girl, it's nothing real as this Can't trust a soul, I keep a hammer, call it to the gym I've been really in the field, love the rush, I love the feel Lately, I just wanna run it up Oh, put TFW in the chat. T D final word. Let me see TFW. Keep the engagement going. I know it's the off season, y'all. Hit that like hit automatically. That like. Hit that yeah, like. Start it up with that like, man. All right, man. Tuck, we gonna start it off with you, bro. Uh oh. I'm laughing at Wes's mustache in that picture. <laughs> 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 Suave, Rico, Suave. He on his way in, so we go get this in just a second, man. Dog. All right, y'all. Uh, let's let's uh, let's see. Let's start with Dak because my question is this. All right, and this is the perfect place to ask this question. Okay, so when I go look at what came out, right, mm-hmm. and I just they say the Cowboys and QB Dak Prescott have a mutual understanding of his contract situation sources mm-hmm. say with no offers from dallas despite him being in a contract year owner jerry jones said we are where we are locked and loaded for this year no indication a deal is coming so what's your thoughts on that Low. Well, there's no sense of urgency. You know, we to me, I I'm already with the belief that it's time for Dak Prescott to go. And I know I haven't talked to you guys in a minute with this, but here's what my here's why I came up with this conclusion. Because they ultimately don't want him here. If they wanted him here, they would have did this deal, particularly in January, February. And they would have been able to make sure we get the maximum amount of pieces. What they're doing collectively when there's uh, when they're saying and we heard stories leaked out with our girl Jane Slater saying that the extension may not come until August. What they're trying to uh, bet on or hedge their bet on is to make this be one of those battle royales during the Oxnard time. Trey Lance, Cooper Rush and Dak. That's what I'm seeing. And when they said mm. that there's no applied pressure as far as a mutual agreement that this will be something that they would look at down the line, then what would be the whole point of it all? My thing is, if you're not trying to win it all now, if you're not trying to get the creme de la cremes now and you let that all dry up, you didn't touch you didn't touch uh, C.D. Lamb's contract. You didn't try to attempt to touch Tamara Steele's contract. And we sitting back here waiting on our hands and watching the days as the world turns is not the way we should be looking at this. So I'm looking at it just like it was in 2019. They're looking at it similar. They're going to uh, hold Dak Prescott feet to the fire and bet against him. And when I saw a teary eyed Dak Prescott father saying that they betted against my son. Mm hmm. I think that that's the same thing. They are still betting against his son. So that's why they are waiting until August. They're waiting for this showdown to be in training camp. Mm. And Big, I'm so sorry. We always start with you, Big Dog. Oh, no. No, no. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. Can you do me one Uh, favor? I'm going to take your camera down just a little bit. You know I'm a production freak, bro. You already know. Just a little bit. But go ahead. What do you want me to do? Right there. Right there. What do you want me to do? Because I'm trying to get you. Right there. 
right there. I'm trying to get that that lower third. Mm. Boom. There you okay. go. Okay. Right there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is what I want to say to y'all about Dak Prescott. I did a video earlier today, and I'm gonna go ahead and read this right quick. This is my thoughts of what Stephen Jones and them. Maybe more so Stephen Jones about Dak. Maybe I don't know about Jerry, but I definitely feel this about Stephen Jones. This was um, Scott McClellan, the GM for the Washington Redskins at the time in 2018 when he was talking about Kirk Cousins. And before they were going to sign him, he was balking at signing him. Mm. And they didn't. Well, they were going back and forth. And this is what he said about him. And this is what I feel like they feel about Dak and just my opinion on it. He's a good player. Is he special? I don't see special. Dang. McLaughlin add that when he first tagged Cousins in 2016, Washington was building a roster around him to make him special. Mm. While Cousins is talented and he works his tail off, McLaughlin warned that for Cousins to succeed, a team needs to be more than just a signal caller. You need to have more around him. Because you don't want him throwing the ball 35 to 40 times to win a game. That's what he said about Kirk Cousins when they franchise tagged him. He didn't believe in him. And that's why they didn't sign a multi-year deal. And he went to the Minnesota Vikings and we saw what happened. This is what I feel, feel like the Cowboys feel about Dak. They feel like he's good, but I don't feel like they think he's special. Because like they don't think he's special. That's why they wait. That's why they try. Why did you get Trey Lance? Cooper Rush proved to you games for you. Dak went out. Cooper Rush won games for you. That was a doubt for a lot of us fans right here, right? Cooper Rush won games for you. So if Cooper Rush won games for you and Dak Prescott is your guy, why would you go out and get another backup to back up Cooper Rush when Cooper Rush already showed you to win games? You mm-hmm. fourth round pick, fourth round picks are very cherished for you. And you wouldn't spend a fourth round pick on somebody who was 23, a high draft pick, had some upside, even though it didn't work at San Francisco, doesn't mean it wouldn't work somewhere else. So while I believe that you picked up this guy to be an expensive backup, you picked up his uh, his uh, uh, option, didn't you? So you're picking up his option, which was $5 million for what? To be an expensive backup? I don't believe it. So just like what Law was saying, and I've been saying for the last three years when Dak has been there, how they don't believe in him. They were in a quandrum when Dak broke his leg. They didn't have nobody. See, that's the thing. If they had Trey Lance and they knew Trey Lance had something on them right now, they would be even more stouter in these negotiations, in my opinion. But see, they don't know what they have in Trey Lance. That's why they want to wait and see, in my opinion. They may sign the deal. I can shut up. That's fine. But if they wait and this gets into August or something like that, they want to see what Trey Lance looks like so they can even have even a more of argument chip. I'm going to say it on record. They can say all they want that we think the world of Dak. When I always hear Stephen Jones say we think the world of somebody, he gone. So I don't believe what they say. I don't believe what Jerry says because Jerry just be talking. Now I don't believe nothing he says. He just talks to make the to get the news. We should already know that by now. I listen to what Stephen Jones says because what Stephen Jones says is yeah. truth. Yeah. I will give that about him. He don't lie to you. What he says in the media, it's what he's really saying. He ain't shucking a jive in you. So I listen to what he really says in there. And I don't, I don't, I'm, you know, Dak is working with us. That's fine. If it happens, it happens. I'm not hating. But I'm still going to go with the notion you don't believe in him because I don't see these other organizations putting their franchise quarterbacks to what they put Dak through. So that's my piece. Mm. And, and let me just say this before you go any further. They, the Washington team, they've been through 15 quarterbacks since they let go Kirk Cousins. And let me just say these names right quick and let me know if it ring a bell to anyone. Alex Smith, Josh Johnson, Colt McCoy, Mark Sanchez, Case Keenum, Dwayne Haskin, Colt McCoy again, Alex Smith, Dwayne Haskin, Cal, Cal Allen, Tyler Heineke, Ron Fitzpatrick, Garrett Gilbert, Tyler Heineke, Carson Wentz, Sam Howell, and Jacoby Brissett. So, and now they finna draft or look for another quarterback. So that's what the outcome of it was since they let go of Kirk Cousin. And out of that whole entire time, they've been in contentions once, and that was in 2020 in the pandemic year. So I'm not saying that any of these guys will, or the Cowboys will fall under that same umbrella, 
by moving on from Dak Prescott, but that is the possibility of the realms of what you could go into. Now, Trey Lance, he do have. But we're still, but I ain't trying to cut you off, Law, but listen to what you just said. Law, listen to what you just said. I ain't trying to cut you off. I apologize Uh about that. But you just said that they moved on for Kirk Cousins and you gave a whole list of quarterbacks. But we will also say, and I'm not dissing. Please understand, I'm not dissing nobody when I'm saying this. I'm just trying to show what it is. Kirk Cousins has left, and they showed all these purgatory, and they haven't did anything. But Kirk Cousins hasn't did nothing in Minnesota either. Yeah, but we could argue that it been better than what Washington been doing, correct? Absolutely. But he still ain't did nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he still, but he still hasn't done anything, on, and he still has nothing. that label define of not. Nothing. We can define okay, nothing. okay, we knew. Okay, I will show you. I will, I will just define because when we was when he was at Washington, we knew he could get numbers. We knew he could get numbers. We knew he was a good quarterback. But he hasn't taken his team to the next level. He went to Minnesota with the thought of Minnesota was having the thinking of you have the potential to take this team to the next level. That has not happened since he's been with the team. Okay. And now he's with the Atlanta Falcons. So when I say nothing, you were come or you brought, they brought you over to Minnesota to be that guy to take them to the next level. That never happened. Now he is gone. Oh, okay. So I just disagree with yeah, that. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. I, I don't get that at all. Because, see, that's the same that narrative that they put on Dak. I don't think it should be on any quarterback to take a whole team to the next level. I think that's the problem. But they it's put the pieces around. Did they not put pieces around him? Yeah, they can put Did they not put pieces around, around him in yeah, Minnesota? You can put pieces around okay, him, so that if, don't mean that you okay, take so the then, to the next level. You just do your job. The only thing you're supposed to do as a quarterback is your job. Like it, all these it, okay, it's your right. job. Hold on, hold on, so we're gonna this, say this, that, but they didn't pay him to just be oh, his job. Hey, hey, hey. They didn't pay him to just yeah, to be did. his job. Your job yeah, is to do. No, your they job didn't. They paid him big money. Yeah, they they paid him big money. money. I don't want to hear that. They paid. They didn't pay Kirk Cousins big money to come. They paid him a guaranteed contract. They paid. They paid him a guaranteed contract. So you saying every quarterback come on? He got a guaranteed contract. You show me where anybody else left and got a guaranteed contract. It don't so matter. Big. He was yeah, the highest paid. Yeah, it do. So yeah, what you do. saying And what he do in Minnesota? Tell me what they did. Because he highest uh, paid. You got no. excuses. No. No, hold on. excuses. It's false. You got it. What it is an excuse. It is an excuse. Take teams. Not, not, no, bro. I, 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 no. So why did they pick him up? Tell me why they signed him, boss. Why they signed him. You sign a quarterback that you feel like is a franchise quarterback and you build around him. That's what all smart teams do. Did they take? Did they sign him to feel like they was taking him to the next level, that team? Yes or no, boss? I mean, like, that's yes, why I asked you to dude. define next level. Yes or no? Mean? I don't know what That's why they picked that. him, right? They is that why they picked they him? Like was a franchise quarterback, meaning we trust you to do And, and was going to help that team take the next level. That shit, help no. that team to go I to the next don't, level because no, they had they don't do put that, pieces bro. around I him. I never will okay. ever ask a quarterback to take a whole team to a level. I'm going to pay him to do his job as quarterback. So big, so big. So to answer your whole question, let's take Kirk Cousins and toss him to the side real quick. What is the difference between Matt right. Stafford in Detroit versus Matt Stafford, who won the Super Bowl. They traded for him because they thought he could take him to the next level. What happened? I'm saying, from a, from a player perspective, it was the same player, but wouldn't you agree that the LA Rams has put more talent around Matt Stafford? Yeah, they definitely put, but do we, can we agree? Do you? Now, let me ask you this, Tuck. Do you honestly think, looking at Matthew Stafford and Kirk Cousins, who do you think is honestly the better quarterback? Matt Stafford, but look at okay. Kirk Cousins and Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is the better. Right. But let's let's say this though. <laughs> let's say this though, Tuck, because Matthew Stafford was with the Lions. That was not a good team. You finally put him with a good team, and he already had that elite talent. What happened? But he he was he wasn't winning any playoff games in Detroit. So you mm-hmm. so you take so you take a, a Detroit was not a good team. He's Detroit a, was not a great he's to good take team. That Detroit did not have the talent that Minnesota had. Well, Come on, don't do that. Kirk Cousins is not like Matthew <laughs> Stafford. <laughs> you're you're trying to trick me and you can't do it. Wait, wait, I'm not wait, saying wait, you touch, but boss, but I will argue with y'all. No, I will. No, I'm not. First of all, Matthew Stafford. First of all, Matthew Stafford. Hold up. Matthew Stafford. Where was he drafted? 
first round. Oh, man. First round, right? Tell first me. First, round, first overall. In first the round. He was a top five pick. Right. Yeah. What was Kirk Cousins? Fourth round, something like that. Fourth, something like that. Right. Okay. So yeah. you have Matthew Stafford with the Detroit Lions, and you drafted an elite quarterback. That team was not good. Yeah, when he Sue finally got with a team, team when he fought that yeah, team, Calvin you know yo, yo, Cal da, now uh, Calvin Johnson, Calvin Johnson and and Adama Sue, that, that's all they had. I mean, I mean, what more do you They didn't have a big time squad when he oh my gosh, when he went over to LA and he had a better squad, he had a better team and better coaching. Who was his coach over there? Wait. So was it Wait, the squad or the quarterback? You can't have right. it both ways, Malik. Okay, you, I'm going to say it was the quarterback. It ways, bro. You took, now you I'm going to say it's No, I'm not. It I'm not trying to have it no way. Which one is it? It was, the, it was the quarterback that helped that squad take. They had a good team. Jared Goff, Jared Goff, Jared Goff is not better than Matthew Stafford as a quarterback. Quarter, Matthew Stafford has elite talent, and we know that. Matthew Stafford has elite talent and when you got him with a team matthew stafford would have won the super bowl with huh? the Vikings. matthew stafford would have took that team to the super bowl is that what you said? i don't know i didn't see it i saw i saw him leave the lions and go to the rams and win a super bowl in one year with jalen ramsey man you forgetting so everything. let me see so okay so we'll just have this discussion We'll just have this discussion. Make sure y'all holler at me when Dak is not with the Cowboys and he goes with another team. And let me see him win a championship. I'm not hating. If he if he does, I'm happy. But if he don't, y'all not gonna have that conversation with me. Well, you're not. Hold on, real quick. We got two in. people they talking. They went all in, didn't they? They went all in when they got Matt Stafford, right? Yeah. They went all in. They they made moves. They got rid of all their draft picks. They felt like they finally had their quarterback in place, and they made the aggressive moves to put talent around Matthew Stafford. One thing they just got Matthew Stafford, they loaded the clip that year. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So they it did. wasn't like they just got Matthew Stafford, and they sat back and said, oh, we're good. We got Matt." No, they continued to make moves. I didn't say that, though, Tuck. I didn't say that, though, Tuck. Minnesota, even when they got Kirk Cousins, they still tried to get players around him and he wasn't able to do it. He wasn't able to help. We saw him in the playoffs, right? And you can't tell me you ain't saw Kirk Cousins be choking. Don't say y'all right. ain't say it, so now y'all trying right. to act like he don't be choking. Right, right, he does. But I'm not comparing Dak in the same level as Kirk Cousins. You're talking about the MVP runner-up. Like, and that's the thing, right? I get it. That's the Dak thing. Was, He's the MVP runner-up. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I mean, he was top 15. Like, this the, is the MVP runner-up and we lost in the playoffs. But, but you can't just pin all. You what? cannot sit there and say that that. I'm not pinning it all on Dak. Yes, you did are. He, did he play great? Did Did Dak play great? He played who, who okay. Played great that game. Who played great I'm versus first, Green Bay? No, he series. did enough. That's Michael what he Gallup. did. He definitely did enough. I mean, we scored thirty points. Right, <laughs> boss. I asked you, was there going to be any excuses, and you're giving them. <laughs> them ain't excuses, man. Listen, we're not gonna do yeah, all you are. that just word play and oh, throwing out we? insults and because no, that's because we've I, never I, done I, that. How am I throw, I'm not Where throwing just, insults to you, yes, my you dog. Are, Don't yes, do that. Are. I'm not throwing insults. We did a you show last excuses? year, and you said, "Kill it." No, you said Bro. we did a show last year. You said a sh we did a show last year saying, when man, I said saying. when you said get rid of Kellen Moore and let's roll with Dak and, Pre and and Mike McCarthy and let's see what happens and I said okay there's not going to be any excuses for next year then and you said okay so but Dak had a MVP type year I wasn't going against Dak but we got into the playoffs that was our prime time to win it. I'm not saying Dan Quinn didn't do goofy stuff. I didn't say the defense right. didn't give it up, but Dak didn't play the greatest. And at the end of the day, this is the third year of having a good team, and the team has failed. So really what I'm it? saying is, what? but when I, when I read that quote from that guy, that's what I feel like the Cowboys think about Dak, and that's one of the reasons why I feel like they – Hold off on him because there was they opportune time. Real stupid if they believe that's that. fine. Because I'm not saying they ain't stupid. Because it's very dumb to say the runner up yo, yo. MVP, which was yo, the yo. most. I got you, Wes. Yo, yo, yo. We can hear you. All right, so, yo. so to say the runner up MVP 
got to prove something else. And right. the MVP that was the run up had better numbers than the overall MVP. Like why in the world would Jerry Nim not believe in that? I think that is crazy. Like I can, I can see if people say I want Dak to get better. Sure. Cause they lost Dak. in the playoffs and why would uh, that's because boss, people as blame owner? the quarterback which is right. okay and it's the same thing i said to uh sean uh sean and well not to sean i retweeted. are you hearing me what i'm saying what the ownership would think about Dak though yeah i heard what you're saying but then why yeah, didn't they do that with crazy. romo because see if that's because that's the thing i keep hearing I, I, hey, hold on big hold on because big. you just hold said on, romo finish, was his son quick. no hold on no 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 i never okay. said that okay now this okay. is the deal. this is this is the thing how can Jerry okay. all of a sudden have a standard of you got to get to a Super Bowl or right. NFC championship to get paid when Romo got paid right. without that? And the real reason Romo got paid because he actually signed a bad deal. He had a six year contract. So I don't believe for a second that Jerry got these super standards to where mm -hmm. he can look at an MVP runner up and be like mm, i want more it's like man nah, you saying jerry though do you games. don't think steven has the voice in this no he got a voice in this and I, I sure know he ain't stupid like that like how you gonna have the second best player voted by most people in the whole league but then doubt him that is dumb as fuck and if we but are this really is, that but this dumb, is what I we don't deserve that that is too stupid. Okay. Let him go. But what I'm go. saying is, <laughs> why do, okay, then right. tell me why they got Trey Lance. Because oh, yeah. they want leverage for the deal. If Dak says today, you know what, I'll take a six year deal, he's a Dallas Cowboy. He gets signed today. That's the thing. They're trying to use Trey Lance as leverage. And I remember right. being in Boston this show last year. I know that. I know so that. Stephen Jones spoke about Trey Lance's contract. We already knew what it was, but yep. here's the problem. Dak applied pressure by playing with the MVP caliber level. And so now the Cowboys are back to the corner because if you don't believe in Dak, you believe he's Kirk Cousins, then try to find a trade partner and get some value in return. But here's the problem. The Cowboys don't want to marry Dak, but they don't want nobody else to have him. So mm. they're kind of stuck because if they let him I go, agree. He in and, yeah. they, and he pulls a Matt Stafford, then they're going to be like, oh, you know, that's, so that's their that's they biggest fear right now. So I think they believe that's in that, what I'm talking they about. Win, Tuck. They want to win the deal. They want to win this deal. That, and that's what it was. And Dak Prescott has all the leverage. And for billionaire owners, they don't like being backed against the wall. Yep. They don't, they don't like that. They don't like that. They lost the first time. Mm -hmm. And they feel like, you know what? We're going to spin the block and we're not going to lose this time for negotiations. They're not even focused on football. We got Wes in the building. I, I ain't going to lie. I agree with that. Wes, go. Hey, can you see my face? I'm going to put you in there. Oh, okay, okay. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, West Coast, man. I appreciate y'all for having me on the show, man. Hey, man, y'all been having some great back and forth. Really, really good back and forth. I ain't gonna lie. I agree with both of you guys on certain points. Um, I think I, I say I, I agree with Jay Tuck on the point of the fact that the Dallas Cowboys definitely, I mean, the Dallas Cowboys want Dak Prescott, but, you know, it's definitely a, a degree of them wanting him and not, you know, not necessarily want other people to want him too. But we also got to remember that, you know, the Cowboys could, you, just because they didn't get a deal done today doesn't mean they don't get a deal done throughout the season. You know what I'm saying? And, and to keep it real, I would not be surprised if the Cowboys, if they do get a deal done, I would not be surprised if it's like two days before training camp. Because this is the thing. If you're Dak Prescott and the Cowboys just agreed that they're not going to give you a deal, then guess what? You don't have a quarterback come training camp because I'm not going to be at training camp throwing footballs. I'm not doing that, bro. Right? I have 659 million. And I'm going to keep it 100 with you. If I'm the Dallas Cowboys and I have Dak Prescott on a one year deal for $59 million, someone divide that by 17. That's how much he's going to make in 2024 per game. What's up with you, son? That's what he's going to make per, per game. So my thing is this, I'm not paying Dak Prescott to, to practice at training camp. Why? Because, bro, the grass at training camp may not be even. And guess what? He may slip, fall, and now I have $59 million out the drain. Because you guys got to remember, the last time Dak Prescott played on a one-year deal, he did not make it through that deal. He didn't even make it through that season. He made it through, what, five games, four and a half games, and he, he messed up his leg. You would think the Cowboys would have learned from that situation, especially from this player. And then let's just be real. Dak Prescott has one of the most gangsters um, agents of all time. If I'm Dak Prescott 
And I'm just saying this right now, and I'm not suggesting this, but if I'm Dak Prescott, right, and this te this this team is two and four, we start off slow. What is stopping Dak on a guaranteed contract to be like my neck, my back, my neck, and my back? I can't even play tomorrow. Matter of fact, it's the whole vertebrae. I can't even play the rest of the season. Jalen Ramsey said something on a podcast that might end up getting him in trouble if someone want to go really put their fingers on it. He was talking to, um, I think, the, I forget the dude he was talking to, but basically what he was saying is he was trying to get a contract in Jacksonville, but Jacksonville didn't want to pay him. So what did Jalen Ramsey all of a sudden had? Ah, he all of a sudden had a back injury that just couldn't prevent him from just getting on the field. And then he asked him, but what happened when you got to L.A.? He was like, man, you just miraculously got right. <laughs> healthy all of a sudden, right? And he's like, man, you know, they got some of the best trainers in the world in New York. You know, hink, wink, wink, wink. This is what Jalen Ramsey is saying. Like, if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, you have your quarterback on a one-year deal. You have your star wide receiver on a one-year deal. You have your head coach on a one-year deal. Um, if this thing goes left, what stops these guys from checking out? And then my thing for Jerry Jones is if you are all in or if it's even winning, it, I don't care if it's you. It, I don't care what his slogan is. If it's all in or win with what we got, the common thread is to a degree, Jerry Jones does want to win. He just wants to do it his way. Old, 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 old blue eyes. Old, Frank old Sinatra. School, he wants to do it his way. School, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he wants to Frank Sinatra this thing. He wants to do it his way. But my, the thing is, he still wants to win. He W I N wants to win. So Jerry, how do you, how do you do, how do you predicate, how do you make sure that you still get your ultimate goal and that is to win under these confines? Like I don't know what the hell's gonna happen in 2025, but I am very, very curious about 2024 because man, like Dak still has so much leverage over this team. Like if I'm Dak yeah, Prescott that, right that now today. Well, that, 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 do not, that, that do not want to get off the field, though. Basically, I get with what you're saying, but he's wired differently. Every chance and opportunity Dak Prescott ever got to perform, even in college, or even I believe I heard a story even at high school, was due to the mm -hmm. starting quarterback going down. So that's his battle cry. I remember vividly out there in 2021. Remember meat falling from the bone from his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, hey, man, we got to load manage you. We got to pull you up off the field. Yeah. He said, I didn't ask for a goddamn thing to be pulled off. I'm going to stay right here. Facts and we were too, like, bro. I know, that's you, Cajun. Yeah. Dad. And Law Nation. Oh, and Law Nation. Back, I'm back on the hold, on, West, wait, hold on, Wes. Let him finish. No, no, no. I'm just going to say that Dak, Dak is still going to throw that ball, even if it's advised for him not to. And that mm -hmm. was the stipulation, even when his his bone was all broken and bruised, even mm -hmm. uh, that following year. So I would say this. I think that Dak Prescott, he's going to go against that part and he's going to always get out there on the field. And then when the season kick off, one of his other impediments that he do is that he don't negotiate contracts during the season. That's one right. of the things that he block off. So that's why uh, James Slater said, I believe that this contract will get done by August. Now, give or take how you think of about James Slater. But here's another in-house tool. Hmm. Trey Lance is signed with CAA which is the umbrella that even Todd Francis worked under. It's like these boys is in the same cubicle. Mm -hmm. I'm quite sure that they already worked out some type of detailings of a deal as it relates to that agency. That CAA is a big dog ag agency because mm -hmm. the Todd France also <laughs> represent, uh, what's that big boy down there in uh, Buffalo land? Oh, Josh Allen. And he represent also uh, what's that guy named uh, Pat Mahomes and Dak Prescott? So he got all of the creme de la creme type of quarterbacks that he represent or his umbrella, the CAA represent. So I'm quite sure it won't be no cheap handouts. That's why Dak Prescott refused to give that that cheap hometown discount because of what the agency is able to do with others. Check this out. Maybe now, I I want, can on, I say, can on, I give it? Oh, real quick, Wes, I'm going to come back to you. Give me one second. I want to just kind of spin everybody to something real quick. 
Hold on real quick, man. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. See, my boy CFT always be doing the Lord's work. He don't miss nothing. Let's just pause real quick. Because CFT, right my boy said right 300 people in here and only 100 likes. Disres That's why CFT like, is the dude. Don't miss. He no, don't miss. Good. That motherfucker don't miss, man. He's good. <laughs> in the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. He don't in miss nothing. In the heat of he don't miss. He don't miss yeah man appreciate that cft now all right i just want to say something real quick and i'm gonna go around the whole circle so let's share all right so when i read this and i see that a mutual understanding of his contract sources say they have a mutual understanding with no offers so my question is this which story is true what ian said or this no, the cap number, you know, it's so overblown in a, in a given moment because you have to look at a cap, what, what the situation is going to look like, not only this year, but next year. Uh, when you have to, if you have to franchise because, you know, you're having a tough negotiation, not unlike we had with Dak uh, three years ago, uh, you know, you've got to be able to account for all things. And, uh, uh, but no, I feel like we're able to cut and shoot. Dak's been willing to work with us. We've had great discussions about you. Dak's been willing to work with us. We've had great discussions with you. Dak's been willing to work with us. We've had great discussions with Dak's been willing to work with us. We've had great discussions about him and his contract. And he's all in on working with us. And we've had, uh, you know, uh, uh, personal uh, discussions with Dak as well. So, uh, you know, other than that, that's about all we'll say about our negotiations with him. We want to keep those private. And, uh, you know, won't get into timelines or anything like that, but uh, certainly a priority of ours. So let me start Yo. with you, Tuck. What's going on with that, bro? Like, come on now. We Stop see it. Cap. Stop <laughs> the cap. Stop the cap. Right go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Somebody no, cap um, it, bro. Who cap it? Yeah. And so I remember when we spoke about this, when we had Landlord on, and the reason why I kind of leaned towards they were having discussions because they was having all the other situations going on with Dak. So I feel like that may have been an opportunity for them to speak, right? Because he's using the Cowboys lawyer. Yeah. But it just doesn't sound Dak. Like, I don't see Dak having personal conversations about contracts directly with the Joneses. Just like you said, Law, he has the, you know what I'm saying, the creme, the creme of agents. He's going to give that to Todd Fran. So I just don't see that working that Dak was sitting up there, key came with the Joneses talking about negotiations and contracts. So, you know, right. maybe he may have spoke about it in jest or something, but I don't think there's been anything serious. So I would lean more towards Ian Rappaport's uh, you know, report because mm. for Dak's standpoint, there is no negotiations. It's either that you meet my demands or I walk next year, bro. Like that's it's just it's just that simple. And here's the reason why. Is because of the little childish things that the Cowboys have done to Dak Prescott. He owes them zero favors. You know what I'm saying? Y'all mm. went and got Trey Lance and tried to use that as pressure on me. Well, congratulations. I played an MVP caliber level. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he's backed them into a corner where it's like, you're going to have to make a decision. And I think that's the biggest problem with all of this and the frustration for Cowboys fans is if you don't want Dak Let's try to move on and get something back in return versus letting him walk. Because this will not be a Lamar Jackson situation where Dak's a free agent, but no team is interested in signing him and he returns back. That's not going to happen with Dak Prescott. So you're going to have to go out there and just get the deal done. And me personally, if we wait till August and get the deal done, okay, that's cool. We get Dak back, but that does us no good because all the free agents are already picked over, bro. Like, we needed this money about a week ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, so mm. that's my frustration know, about know, waiting. Know. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are we waiting until camp to get the deal done and then we're going to have extra money to do what? Go get some bargain basement free agents? I, I'm just not a fan of how the Cowboys have acted this offseason and the, the treatment of Dak Prescott is unfair and it's putting this team in a bad situation because they're sitting back saying – we couldn't get Jonathan Hankins. We don't have, we couldn't afford it. We couldn't get Tyron Smith back. We couldn't afford it. Pinning all of that, we can afford it on Dak Prescott when we know clearly they could have. Big, what's what's going on, man? Which side? What's going on? I mean, I'm agreeing with Tuck. I'm agreeing with what he said about, you know, like I said, if this is your franchise guy, y'all always trying to win the negotiation, right? But this right. has been disrespect to your franchise quarterback the whole time. So that's why I keep on saying he ain't your franchise like y'all say he is. Because if y'all say he is, 
Y'all wouldn't put your franchise. But you mentioned yourself, boss. They didn't put Romo through this. No. They didn't put Romo through this. No. And yes, he signed the deal that they wanted. But why is Dak not signing that deal? So here's my thing. The agent that he got, just like Wes said, and we've been talking about on Burgers and Blitzes, that agent, right, that he had top France ain't no joke. Yeah. He don't play yeah. no games. Mm. He's nope. he's there for murder. Mm. He's the top deal for his client, and he ain't playing around with y'all. Why did Dak nope. drop his agency right before he was about to sign the deal and picked him up? That telling you Dak don't trust y'all, okay? Yep. Dak don't trust y'all, and then you see everything that was put in back. So why can I? Why are y'all people trying to tell me the Joneses believe Dak when Dak went away or had his agent put this in there? No trade clause. You ain't going to do this to me. You ain't going to do this to me because I know you are. I know you are going to try to do this to me. Yeah. You made me wait for everybody got their deal before me. Now when my deal is up, you didn't even sign me. You franchised me. I broke my leg. I got $31 million. And guess what? We couldn't spend no money and no agencies in. Why? Because you spent all that money for one year for somebody and you can't really get it what you wanted right so now just like, like tuck said now you're being hostage and they're going to put it on deck well we try to get tyron smith we loved you you're the greatest thing we ever had but you know what we got to sign deck so we can't just sit there you're gonna have to wait so it, it's just like bro if you really believing in your quarterback it's all about the deal Dak ain't doing that okay i don't know where y'all think Dak is going to give you all these concessions i mm. don't believe he is because if he would have he gave it to you last time he's not gonna give you these concessions he don't trust y'all i'm gonna do what i need to do is best for me and that's that hey i Thank love you. being a cowboy and you Big, big game james game changer. Hey, let's have some fun let's have a good time man let's kick it Hey, I love being a cowboy. And you that boy made me hit the button twice. Boy, I got two. two. I got two. That boy got two. I love it. I got two <laughs> of them. Which, yeah, which one just, is the truth, Law? What's going yeah. on, man? Break this well, down. Well, I'm just going to say this, and I'm, I'm going to touch on it and move off of it. Yeah. These, these agencies is just like, you know, you work under a certain institution, and then you break off. Just like real estate, you get your own broker's license, and you'll be able to do a little bit more. But you still go back to get your resources from who you started from. That's all I'm saying is with Todd Francis, Todd Francis' team. Also, when you work in a big, massive contracts like he have, he has small, smaller guys to also work under it and make sure everything goes through. And one of the things that's been an impediment of the Dallas Cowboys is how we work contracts. We may think that we got good contracting people within the confines of this office, but nine times out of ten, we get whipped really bad on some of these contracts. And it be coming back to us like, hey, we waited too late. We waited too long to move on some deals. Hey, if it was anybody else, that Michael's Gallup contract, they would have been fired, right? Yeah. If it was anybody else, Ooh. that D-Law contract, oh, my goodness. <laughs> to franchise tag a person yeah. twice yeah. and then get that deal, somebody would have got fired, right? So mm -hmm. it goes back to these contracts. And we can sit back and say every now and then you get a fool. And I'm not calling Tyron Smith a fool. But collectively, what he did for the offensive line market, he already shot himself in the foot for taking that first ever Pat Mahomes type of deal Facts. to take money for cheap for all of those years. And still people never value Tyron Smith for that contract because they wanted him to go. Right. They say, ah, oh, he's a waste of time. But he took a team friendly deal for the majority of his life here his in Dallas. The majority you know? of his life. <laughs> for real. Right. And people still didn't respect that. So Facts. I get it. So for those who are out there, just keep in mind, for those who say, hey, take a team friendly. Remember, Tyron Smith, and I get it, he was hurt majority of the time. But one person who really stood tall to the Joneses and, and really got his money, got his bag that nobody talked about that was selfish. Nobody said that, hey, look at him starting off slow. Hey, what's going on? Is Zach Martin. Right there in the photo. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yep. Right there. My guy, Zach Martin. I was nobody about to say said, that oh, in that man, photo. Selfish, man. Hey, man. They came he quick as hell for him. 
Yeah, they covered that up. And he held out, ladies and gentlemen, when you had Mike Solari trying to teach a new system and scheme and philosophy. When also you had Jeff Glasgow, Mm -hmm. who got the run game that's married to the offensive line. These guys were never on the same page, ladies and gentlemen. But not one soul is brave enough to say, hey, Zach, you were selfish, man. And I get it. (laughs) I can. I can say you selfish. Just like Jason Witten's ass was selfish. Just like Jason Witten was selfish. When they paid four point two million to bring his ass out of retirement, I don't want to hear that. And when it's a whole different story, we could talk about something. We don't want to talk about those subjects. But you played Tyron Smith, but you paid Jason Witten four point two million to come out of retirement for nothing. And then you gonna sit there and cave for Zach Mark? Oh, we ain't gonna pay him this money. You caved like the two days later. I don't want to hear that stuff, <laughs> man. I'll, I'll get on Zach Morton's ass all day. I said trade his ass. You should. But when they, if you would have gave a couple of first round picks, bye. Oh, whoa, 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 wait, 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 oh wait, God, hold no. on. Bro. I love being a cowboy. Yeah, I said, you got you three. Big, big game, Jay. Yeah, yeah. game changer. Let's have some fun. Let's have a good time, man. Let's kick it. Wes, what's going on? I'm sorry. No, you good. Turn it down. You you good. Uh, hey man, uh, I'm talking about big game. So I'm talking about down between down. Steve and Jones <laughs> and Ian. Like we saw the report from Ian Wes. So which make these jive? I mean this this my thing right here, right? I got two questions that I got to ask Dak Prescott because I don't really. I mean, who who cares what Jerry Jones thinks? Who cares what what Ian thinks? I want to talk to my quarterback. Okay, I want to know. Real question. Oh, you don't right. ask questions now? Hold on, wait, wait, so wait. That question. Look, look, I want to look him in his face. Where that? Dak. Where is that? Dak. Oh, I got you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Dad. <laughs> go ahead. Dad. Doug, do you really want to be here? Because I'm gonna tell you this right here. Players who want to be here, players who want to be here, you know what they do when they don't get their money? They hold out, bruh. Mm-hmm. I hear you saying mm-hmm. that you okay with playing so mm, if you okay yeah. with playing that means that you have yeah, already sat right, down right, Wes. and had a realistic conversation about the consequences of playing on a one-year deal if you get hurt considering that you've already went through this in life and you said mm. that you're okay with taking those risks Dak prescott i want to know why are you okay with taking those risks because I'm going to tell you this right now. Mm. If you're so gun ho about the Cowboys, take whatever damn deal they're offering you right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> take it. Take it. Because if you're that gangster about, I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to show them. Bro, why show them? Take the deal. Take right. the deal. Hey, hey. There is a deal out there. I promise guy, you that. Yeah. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. Listen to me. I, I, you know, somebody said it earlier. I think we are at the point now where it's like, all that love for the Cowboys, that messes out the window. Dak yeah. is playing right now for Dak Prescott. And I'm going to keep it real. I still lean on the fact that I am not going to put someone on the field that can literally say on third and eight, you know what? My neck, my back hurt really bad, bro. <laughs> and I can't do nothing about it, bro. Nothing. He's getting the $59 million regardless. I can do nothing. I'm sorry. Like if I'm if I'm Jerry but Jones, do you think and he's I gonna do that, Wes? Yeah, he ain't gonna this, do this it. Is, I just want to finish my point. Hey, if that, I'm that's Jerry not, Jones. He's not doing that. Go ahead. If I'm de- listen to me. If I'm Jerry Jones, what was your there question? Comes a moment- Hold on, real quick. I'm sorry, Wes. What would you ask him, Big? Go ahead. All I was saying was Dak don't do that. And Dak ain't going, oh, I'm hurt. I, I, I ain't seen Dak do that. Can I, can I, I ain't make, seen Dak I was gonna, do that I was actually my neck and my back. I was going to get to that point, okay. right? Go ahead. The last time Dak Prescott did a contract, you know who he was? He was Dak Prescott in the club with the hell, man. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Rolling around with the big car, you know what I'm saying? With his boys in the back. Bruh, today, Dak Prescott is a dude that's about to get married with a baby. Bruh, he had a different mindset right now. Kids change you, bruh. And I'm going to be honest with you, that's why I believe today Dak is okay with betting on himself. You want to know why? Because he's not thinking about, he's thinking about, bro, I'm going to have to deal with you guys for the rest of my life and my career. If I'm Dak Prescott, bro, that's worth going to go take. And think about this. We all said, 
oh my God, worst case scenario, Dak Prescott's going to have to play on a – listen to me. The worst case scenario, Dak's going to get $59 million for one year. Bro, I don't, I don't give a damn how you spend that. There ain't no bad in that for Dak. There ain't nothing bad about that. He's I got, winning. I, I, got some bad in. I got something to There's add some to. Uh, Hell yeah, some bad I got, I got something to add to. The one time that I saw Dak Prescott a little pissed about the organization – was the day after they signed Trey Lance. And remember, he was good buddies with Will Greer. They had the same workout coach. He was pissed. The uh, offseason. Yep. And then they asked him, are you surprised? Dak, are you surprised? And he said, don't nothing surprise me about yeah, this organization. you right. Lord. I wish I had that clip Man, to put you this right. out there. And you put a quarterback that's a little bit taller than you, six foot four, got a strong arm, and hey, needs some development, needs some good coaching, or what have you. And then you slap number fifteen on him because that was his number that he had in college. And now you're sitting back here looking like, oh, I I got to make sure that I don't miss any days. Oh I gotta hell be on my feet no. And choose. So yeah, man, Dak Prescott is that dude, Wes, that also say. Pressure is a privilege, and I don't think that he's going to walk back his words even when time. He talks a real good game before the games, and I'm not beating up my guy, my Cajun warrior, Dak Prescott. Yeah, but remember when he, the truth. Before, we paid up, before we played the dog on 49ers, he said, yeah, put, put, him, the truth. put honey all over me. I want the man to come get me. And I was like, wait a minute, Dak, hold on. But here's here's what hey, You know, you know Law, from a fan standpoint, from a from a fan standpoint, from a fan standpoint, I think yeah, that's a yeah. great way to think. But I will think I will say like this: Dak Prescott did not hire Fran Todd Francis so that he can be alone in these tough decisions. Right, Listen exactly. to me: you hire a dog for a fight. There's right. a reason why he has Todd Francis. And I'm gonna tell you this right here: me and Boss Cowboy said this two years ago. It didn't matter what this deal was about. The Dallas Cowboys were not going to do another deal with Todd Francis. There, 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 there's a there's a reason why. I'm be honest with you. Think about this. Go look at go look at Derrick Henry's uh, go look at Derrick Henry's agent. Who's Derrick Henry's agent? Who's representing him right now? They didn't even call Derrick Henry. Same person. They didn't even call Derrick Henry. You want to know why? Because they're like, bruh, if Derrick Henry is represented by Todd Francis, we already know what he's about. No reason to call him. We don't want to uh, deal with him. CAA Sports. Right. CAA Sports. And yeah, I'm gonna yeah, tell you, yeah. and I'm gonna tell this is the last thing I'm gonna say on Dak. This is the last thing I'm gonna say on Dak. If Dak does play, if Dak does play on a one year deal for fifty nine million dollars, listen to me, We're man. We're not getting Dak. We're not getting Dak. Bro, if you take you don't take that risk to go back and sign with the Dallas Cowboys. Don't buy Cowboys, don't buy four jerseys in twenty twenty four. That's all I'm gonna say. You do not take that risk to then go back to what can the Dallas Cowboys sign him and give him to thank him for playing on a one-year deal? And think about this. What if he wins a Super Bowl? What if he actually wins? This is one of those things where Frank Lewis, Lucas said, man, your success is going to take a shot at you. Because yep. if Dak wins a Super Bowl on a one-year deal, win $59 million, then guess what? The lowest you can pay him is what? 65 Shoot, it's going to have to beat 65. Well, here's, here's what I'll say, where I kind of agree with Wes. Right? Dak because, ain't winning no Super Bowl. Dak ain't winning no Super Bowl here. <laughs> um, but the one Damn. way that Dak Prescott can lose this deal is go out there and get hurt. So mm. what I, I slightly agree with Wes. Do I think yeah. that Dak would be like, I'm not playing today? No, he's always going to be out there. But you might see the case where it's fourth and ten. He might not put his nose down and run and try to get those extra yards like he would if he had a guaranteed contract because what's always going to be back in the back of his mind is 2020. You know what I'm saying? So for me yeah. as a Cowboys fan, it's like I kind of hate – I don't want that dark cloud over – over Dak's shoulders while he's out there playing because he's going to be out there trying to prove himself, you know, like those different types of things. Yeah. And the one thing I guarantee that Todd Friends is saying, like, okay, we're going to gamble. The only way you can lose, the only way, even if you throw 25 interceptions, Dak, you're still going to be good. But if you go out there and you get hurt, you know what I'm saying? Yes. You're going to lose. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. the one thing I, I, I kind of agree with Wes is I don't think he's going to miss on purpose, but there might, it's going to be that thought in the back of his mind, like, I could have jumped over a pile and kind of did like I did versus Philly, but not today. Not on this one-year deal. Today. We can't risk it. So I'm going to slide, and we're going to punt. 
You know what I'm saying? You know what it is, Jay Tuck? Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Y'all getting crazy. You got a lot of preachers. You got a lot of preachers in here. Y'all going crazy, man. Hey, because think about this. Hold on, hold on. Wes, wait. All right. Because I love you, Law. What up? Amp love you too. Any teammate, um, and uh, hopefully, just, uh, I mean, obviously, understand it's a business. Uh, you, that's a first round talent, um, and uh, you're always trying to make your team better. Um, but that, that's that was the front office, so we're going to welcome him as we do any teammate. Um, and uh, hopefully, just he makes us better, and then we're going to continue to get back at it. And know we've got one goal as a team. Would you, you know anything expect? about him, like Pat's cross at all? Uh, I mean, Pat's cross, I guess. Uh, during his draft process um, for a marketing thing, and uh, seemed like a great kid. You know, he's a great kid. Knows he's a great, excuse me, a great guy, I should say. And uh, as I said, I'm uh, ready to welcome him to the team. Did you... the trade surprise you at all? Um, to be honest with you, I'm not surprised by anything anymore. Uh, he's been in this league eight years. Been on this team. Same uh, man. Talk... That's what you was talking Ooh. about, Law. Yeah, he mm -hmm. said nothing surprised me anymore. And then if you see, like, if you had the visual, and you may have. You know, I do, I his, don't. the countenance on his face. Yeah, the countenance on his face told it all. Yeah. And I'm going back to what Jay Tuck said. Jay Tuck said, basically, what Dak Prescott is in, he's in the interrogation room, and the lawyer is on the phone with him saying, don't you say a word. Yes. Don't Ooh. you say a word. Hey, mate, and wait, and, and, and everybody want him to talk. Like, nah, don't you say a word. Because yeah. I know all That's of y'all, and y'all in that room, and you paying <laughs> some good money for your lawyer, you're going to be sitting there like this. Exactly. Right. Hey, okay, wait, wait, wait. I gotta jump in, man. Everybody yeah. said they peace. Hey, but listen to hey, but think about this, fellas. Wes, Wes, wait, wait, Wes, Wes. Everybody said they peace. And I got you, Wes. I'm a, I'm hey a, boss, can I ask you a question? I'ma feed you in here, Wes. Let me finish my part. I promise you, I got you. I promise you. Um uh man. So this is what I think is going on with this Stephen Jones versus Ian report. I think it's a little bit of what, and I'm just kind of just, this is a theory, very clear the theory. I believe back. that. On this one. Yeah. To, hey, uh, Wes, can you pause yourself? Cause I can oh yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna repeat my thoughts so I'm gonna forget them right to me. <laughs> oh, it's, okay. it's okay, yeah, I just, we can hear you. <laughs> so um, real quick, so I think it's what Tuck was saying that that first time when Steven Jones came out, they was actually uh in talks with the lawyer because of the icky icky stuff that's going on yeah 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 that's so yeah. in my personal belief i believe that they was kind of in talks during that period and steve and them felt because they had a conversation mm -hmm. <laughs> that okay we go use that and put pressure on him in the public oh we having conversations oh it's going good he said he go work with us you know what i'm saying but then dak is smart so likely what dak did is say, all right we talked about this icky icky stuff uh, my my attorney my agent represents me again hence we're back here Right, you know what I'm saying? Like that, business, <laughs> back to business. That, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. To where, yeah, we see because Dak knows and law. Me and you know this for a fact. For mm -hmm. a fact, Dak's dad told me and law. I taught my son to let his representatives do their up. job. Yep. He said, yeah, I taught him well. Don't get too close to him, didn't he, Law? Yo. Right. So I think when you add it uh, all up, hey, Wes, I can hear you, big dog. Can you My hear bad. yourself? It's all good. Everybody can hear you. So so basically, yeah. Uh, go ahead, Wes. Yeah. Yeah, you good. Man, I'm, my bad. My, I, all of a sudden, my, my, I'm the most interesting room in the house now. My bad. <laughs> I got three kids. Nobody wanted to hang out with me. All of a sudden, I'm on live, and now everybody wants to come in the room. Stop. Leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Um, yeah. What I was saying is this, man. You know, I'm, I'm I'm back more back on Dak and his conversation with his agent because if I ask you guys the question on what Dak's question, what Dak Prescott is saying, 
But my question is this, and I want to ask you guys, and please answer this question. If you were Todd Francis and you have talked Dak Prescott, because there has to be an agreement that you guys are going to play, because you guys got to remember, as much as we say that these players are doing these things, they're not doing things without the say-so of their agent, because their agent is getting a large percentage of this check that they're going to sign, right? So my question is this. If you were Todd Francis and you're telling Dak, we're about to take this historic, this historic chance and risk playing on the biggest one-year deal ever i think in probably sports history i want to know what is todd francis promising that he's going to go get him as his agent because bro if you go do this and you play all 17 games and you walk off that field playoff game or not and you walk off that field a healthy man todd francis what is he what is he promising you and I'm telling well, you right now, it is something outside of what the Dallas Cowboy realm is. It, it, it cannot be. Because think about this. You can't even agree on a deal right now where it fundamentally helps your team. The Dallas Cowboys are really, think about this. It ain't even really about money. Because if it was about money, the Cowboys would yield and just give the contract. Because once you give the contract, it frees up the money. This yeah. is not about money. This is some Game of Thrones I just want it my way. <laughs> like, that's like, and that's what it is. And I'm going I'm to be honest with you guys. The Dallas Cowboys, I think we've seen a regime change as far as Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones. Because Jerry Jones is a guy who put championships in this building, in our building. Stephen Jones, he was not a real executive when we was winning those championships. You know what I'm saying? This is the era of Stephen Jones that we are living in right now. And to be honest with you, we are not we're grab at, at, there's moments where we are literally grabbing on screens so that's why me right now if, if i'm jerry jones i think big game james i was listening to you when i was pulling up to my car when i was pulling up here and i gotta agree with you brother if the cowboys have legitimately checked out with Dak, start trey lance bruh it don't make no sense why would you let him go run it up on you Knowing that you're not going to get anything from you. That makes no sense. You might as well start Trey Lance. You have oh, the, he's gonna hell be the, the, no. And, I'm, and listen to me. I do not agree with Trey Lance. I don't agree with it. I don't agree. Listen to me. I don't agree with this. I'm just speaking from, from business standpoints. I'm not going to let someone right. like that go get this ridiculous contract on. Just think about this. Man, Unless he wins oh, me the, hey, man this is think sad about this, that boss, we even have it. Ain't think about no this. way you if just boss, said what you said. Me, if that doesn't win me a Super Bowl, <laughs> I paid him $59 million for nothing anyway. Oh, if he doesn't win me a Super no. Bowl this year, I, listen, if he doesn't win you a Super Bowl, you paid him $59 million for nothing. So I'm saying from a business standpoint, West. if you West. have legitimately checked out with Dak, move on. Don't try to stay with him because of the kids. That don't ever work. But the problem is, is with all this, this is the Cowboys' fault. It's not Dak's fault. Right. Y'all franchise. It's not. It's, they should have signed him in 2014. Wait, wait, wait. Go to. Please. Yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying. So this is the Cowboys' fault. It's not Dak's fault. They should have signed him before Carson Wentz and Jared Goff, and then maybe you look how many times Carson Wentz has been from team to team to team to team to team. Right? But the Cowboys, they kicked this money back. They yeah. kept playing with Dak Prescott, and not only did they play with Dak Prescott, they tagged him twice. They made him go to the negotiations after the injury. Even now, what did they do? They got petty and brought in Trey Lance. So from Dak's Prescott's standpoint, like you're saying, Wes, the reason why it's not just about money, it's about principle with Dak. Because y'all keep playing with my name every damn time y'all get an opportunity. You know what I'm saying? So, for, no, I'm not doing you no favors because there's no incentive for Dak to do so. You know, you take away his wide receivers and, Larry Cooper and make him go out there and play with, you know, a bunch of, you know, randoms at wide receiver. And now you're, you're smearing campaigns on the radio. You're doing everything is always something when it comes to Dak Prescott versus just showing support, saying this is our quarterback. Pat right. Mahomes didn't go through none of this. Thank Justin you. Justin Herbert didn't go through none of this. Right. Uh, Josh That's Allen That's what I said, though. That's what I said, though, Todd. I've been saying that, though, Todd. I said, I've been, it, it, I said, I've been I'm vilified for saying that. They don't believe no. in him. So you, uh, you're they saying don't all this, Tuck. Tuck, to, Tuck, to you're saying back, all yeah. this, and it goes back to what I was saying, and so that's what I'm, and, and listen, this is the reason. They're looking, I said, when they're talking about, oh, we was all in this year. No, look at last year. They were all in last year, in my opinion. 
They signed Malik Hooker. They signed Donovan Wilson. They signed Terrence Steele, Trevin Diggs. We didn't trade for two players, which they never trade picks for. They got rid of Kellen Moore. They drafted the defensive tackle in the first round in over 20 years. When when they were down the offensive lineman, they picked up Leo Collins. They did pick up Rashard Evans. They were, in my opinion, were doing all this to say, okay, Mike, let's see. Okay, Dak, let's see. And I told you this, boss. I told you this law that they were doing this. And they did this all year. Okay, we're going to sit back and we're going to let you do it your way. And guess what? When they felt like, okay, you failed, so you know what? We're going to do it this way now. We're going to go back to our way now. We stepped out, and we did this for y'all, and it failed, so we're going to go back to our side. Now, y'all keep on telling me they believe in him when Tuck just gave me 72 reasons why they don't believe in him. Okay? So, well, no, I, let me say this in closing, no, They though. believe in the good old boys, and that ain't a, that ain't a good old boy to that, them, that's too. What it is. That's, that's what it is, Big. It's not they don't believe in That's not a good old boy to them. Player. He's not the happy yeah. hour guy. You know what I'm saying? Listen, there's no He's more, listen, the there's no more good old guy. boy. Say that yeah. one more time. Listen to me. He's yeah. not the happy time, hour guy, and that's what they don't like. And we've all been in corporate America where we're the hard workers. We're putting up the numbers. We're the producer. We're the top in the region, but we're not going to the happy hours. We're not going to the golf course with these people chucking up with the managers and we sit back and see so-and-so from accounting get the promotion over us Ooh. that's when it comes to Dak Prescott it's not about Yo. talent the Cowboys are smart up to know we are a better team with Dak Prescott but he's not our guy we have no control right. and the Cowboys like control whether it's over their players whether it's over the coaching staff whether it's over their media Ooh. and when them yeah, strings are bad, good. they will flip out and they want to Tuck, have control, Tuck, don't have control can I ask them. you this though Tuck you don't think those last three playoff appearances are in their head too. You don't think them last and I'm not saying it's all on deck. I'm saying from their and in, in their heads. Those last three oh, hell you have good no. teams. And I man, whatever, dog. I heard I Steven Jones it. saying that meeting when he was like, We need <laughs> I don't we need to get players it. in here that can get us over the hump. Now nah, well, believe I don't what believe you want. I'm gonna believe what three, I want. I know that's well, cool. Well, hey, we well, all well, do that. But I'm but just saying the with that big they was they was about to welcome Dan Quinn back with open arms and he was the biggest, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's contradictions. It's like it's right. contradictions. It's like how was it contradictions? There I'm wasn't even. I'm finna explain. Let me explain, quit. Big. I'm finna okay. explain why I see it different. Right. And I'm this cool. is not at you. This is not at you, by the way. That's what, fine. Okay, this is I why I, I see contradictions in them, and I'm answering your question. So you ask, you don't think they're thinking about the last three? It's it's almost like what I said about when somebody was like. Oh yeah, I think they want him to get to an NFC championship and a Super Bowl. It's like, wait. So with some guys, you hold them to these God standards. With mm -hmm. Dak, you hold I mean, you you hold Dak to God standards and oh, it's them last three. It was them two interceptions. But what about the Tampa game? What about the first Green Bay game? What about the Seattle win in the playoffs? What about mm -hmm. the, the the Rams game where you play good? You know, like what about all those games? You know, so it's these last three. You know, this is a what have you? Hey, can I? Can I, can I can you I, know, I, this is a what have you done for me lately too? I hear you, but let me tell you, years going on, and then we go. Go ahead, Wes. No, no, real quick. I think at some point we just need to rule out. We just need to rule out. Go ahead, real quick. I'm gonna be real quick. I promise you. Okay. This is what I really think is going on. Them years, them years. Mm -hmm. With the see, could we keep thinking? Yeah, they believed in Romo. Look at his deal, six years. Yeah. They and this is the deal. They got over on everybody. Romo signed a six-year deal when his counterparts did a four. Mm -hmm. Des did a five-year deal where his counterparts does a four. We all know Tyron Smith got bent over. We all know, then they bent over Fredericks on the six year deal. Zach Martin figured it out <laughs> late <laughs> and held out, right? He figured it out late, didn't he? Last year he figured out, he said, wait a minute. This long term contract got me like the 10th best paid guard when I'm the top two. No, hold out. And he said, you not bending me over no more. They bent over Tank. They bent over Jalen Smith, the <laughs> worst. Then they bent over Lyle Collins. They bent over Zeke for six. They bent <laughs> over Amari Cooper. The only person that's standing flat-footed like you ain't bending me over is Dak. 
That's what's going on. If I no look thing. at, it's almost like, <laughs> it's almost like, it's almost like, it's almost like that woman that I'm broke. All these dudes, she done, she done, she done broke them all mentally. But she no go, business. she go fight this one. Why you can't break me? You can't break me. You broke everybody else, but you not gonna make me sign no bad deal. You yeah. When all my counterparts are getting Ooh. four and five, you not giving me a six. And so no. what they doing, in my opinion, is they trying to fight to make him like everybody else, and he not going for it. That's what I think is going on. Hey, I don't think hey. it got nothing to do with belief or not belief. This is just dirty <laughs> business and Scrooge McDuck trying to win and get over and bend over him like you did everybody else. Let that cool just breathe. <laughs> I think it's more like what Tuck, I think it's more like what Tuck said, where we don't want nobody. We don't want you going nowhere else so yeah. you can win somewhere else. That's what I feel like their thought too. is too. Yeah. Is that we don't want to. We don't want you to leave with the thought of you could win somewhere else. So we're gonna keep you because he does give them a chance. They do believe he gives them a chance. They they know he's a winning quarterback. Look at his whole right. career. He's a yeah. winning quarterback. Fact. You can't deny that. Right. He's a winning quarterback. The Cowboys don't want to move on from winning. Right. They want to keep the product going. They want to keep their winning. But that still don't mean that they believe in them, boss. Understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, like, jobs, and just because they push you or they, they sign, don't mean they necessarily believe in you. They that. just might not feel. Like I, I said, if they have more, if they have more, more knowledge of Trey Lance, or if he was already had already shown them yeah. something, I bet you their chest be even more bullious in contract negotiations. I ain't fighting mm -hmm. you on that big dog. Makes sense to me. Uh, all, all I'm gonna say is with this uh, and close it on the deck because we got the other part that we're gonna talk about. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yo, that, yeah, that, but but I just want to say this though. Yeah, it hit me. You know, there's another player that's on a contract year, and his name is Trey Lance. Mm. You know, there's Ooh. no more contract after him. So I know for sure he will probably take that six-year deal. Dak don't want to take uh -huh. it. On uh -huh. top of that, keep in mind, the Cowboys still will owe Rain Dakota Prescott $40 million next season. So they're going to have to either way still work out a deal for Trey Lance, even if they do decide to move on from Dak. Because mm. keep in mind, they don't get nothing back in return because of the way the contract is made. No trade clause, no franchise tag ability. So they are literally painted in the corner. The best way for the Cowboys to ultimately get away from this is to ultimately extend Dak and ask him and get on their hands and knees or bend over and <laughs> let them know to say, hey, can you please remove the trade clause, Dak? Because we're going to give you an unbelievable contract. And he'll waive that if they were all 10 toes down, but they're not. So, therefore, they're going to wait till August because they're going to look at Trey Lance during this dog on Oxstar. Me and West Coast, we're going to be out there watching. We're going to be looking. Hey, we're going to let West. you out the real. It wasn't we were was, man. Hey, man it wasn't we were. My fault, Wes. <laughs> I did promise you, and I didn't keep that promise. My bad. Go ahead. <laughs> um because you had some yeah i you, think we were talking about belief system i mean the cowboys didn't believe in tony romo when he signed his contract man tony romo was coming off an eight and eight season he was ranked the 13th he had he was he was second in the nfl in interceptions that year with like 19. he was like 13th in passer tony romo didn't have a good season the year he got that contract you know what i'm saying that hundred million he, we were eight and eight the cowboys did not believe him and the whole nation was telling him to go out there and to let him test the water. The reason why they didn't want to do it is because back then, I think Jerry Jones was just a little bit more, you know, he had, he wasn't, we weren't the same. We were the Dallas Cowboys then, but you got to remember, like we so weren't really the Dallas. Now? He different. Huh? He different. He, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying this. We, the Cowboy brand was different, bro. Like during Tony Romo, that was the only jersey. It was Tony Romo jerseys or Roy Williams jerseys, bro. Like we were yeah, America's yeah, team, but we, it was some it was some weird years with Tony Romo was you know what I'm saying? Like it was we were we were the Cowboys, but it was weird, you know, during those and seasons. Romo so was going I, on a cruise trip with them doors. Though. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like, 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 like it was weird during that Romo, time. Man. They love Romo. Well, Romo, well I, I put it to you like he might have gone on a cruise ship, but the money didn't the, the the finances didn't show that. You know what I'm saying? They tried to rip Tony Romo off on his first contract when he brought him in that room and was pushing all hands up. On him. You guys got to remember the Cowboys don't love people; they just be using stuff. If they if Jerry Jones 
invites you to a to a to a party it's the same reason puff daddy's trying to invite you to a party <laughs> is because he wants to escalate <laughs> you, you ain't lying you're not lying <laughs> you ain't lying if, you if, ain't lying. if, if, if puff lying. daddy is, is, is bringing you to a party <laughs> yeah, it's the same reason lying. why jerry's <laughs> inviting you to a party because he's gonna ask stuff. you at some point there's some shicey stuff about to go down he's like what are you talking about you're Play that. I want to get some glory hole. Play that. I want to get some glory hole. Hey, Play clap that. it up. That, <laughs> hey, that was a lot, Wes. Play it. You that was great, Wes. That was, that was, that was oh, a good one, Wes. That was, that was a good one. I got it. It made sense. Can we get some glory hole? Yeah, who got the glory hole? Can we get glory hole? Can we get some glory hole? That boy said the glory hole. like that damn dude as well. I want me some glory hole. Let's see. There he is. But hey, but hey, but just to end, just to end my thoughts, so we can move on to the next conversation, man. Yeah. Listen, the reason why people, the reason why they were giving better deals back then, six-year deals, is because it was more beneficial to the organization to give you six-year deals. They didn't have all this wiggle room and things that they were able to do now. So now you got to think like this: Cowboys still want to pe- 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 they still want to put people on six-year deals. Players are just smart now. Like players are like, wait, time out. Why would I want to get a six year deal when they're getting $30 million into the cap every single year? That doesn't make no sense. It makes sense for me to sign a three year deal so I can get back into the market. People can say whatever they want to say about Kirk Cousins, but Kirk Cousins it's is probably smartest. contractually yeah, 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 yeah. the smartest quarterback of all time. Oh, he's the a beast. smartest. He's the greatest. He's the greatest. He's the greatest. He's the greatest. I think, think about this. Him, he dude. has almost four hundred million. He's made four hundred, almost four hundred million dollars, and almost guaranteed. This is money that he for sure has in his bank account. Yes. But can he just he, signed a three-year deal? I feel like Kirk Cousins know kind of knows what he is too. I feel like Kirk Cousins yeah, he knows does. what he is. Because think about this, James. Think about this. He knows what he is. He knows how to manipulate that system. Hey, and James, think about this. I'm gonna think about this. And Kirk Cousins never Michael Gallup's himself. You know what that is? He never signs a contract mm-hmm. that he really because like Michael Gallup signed a contract that we were all like, bro, come on, come on, Mike. You know you is right. not gonna be able to sell all that Kirk dough, bro. Come on, contracts. bro. Yeah, Kirk knows. Kirk his Cousins contracts. signs contracts yep. that you'll be like, yeah, Kirk didn't win no Super Bowl, but I don't feel like I got ripped off either, though. You know what I mean? Like, See, right. And, <laughs> and, and, and this is the magic said, of Kirk Cousins. And, and, and somebody y'all. said, yeah, Romo even named his child Jones. Man, y'all better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I go get yeah, and then you know what the Cowboys Kirk did? Cousins. And he retired a Dallas Maverick. Congra- congratulations. No, man. That's right, what happens right, when you mess right. with the Cowboys. Man, I was almost Don't, that's what happens when you mess with the Cowboys. I was almost getting ready to uh, take the bait to talk about Kirk Cousins. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to take no, the no. real bait. Done, but to me, like, go get Hold some be done. Uh-uh. There it is. No, 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 Michael Parsons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here oh, we go. Awesome. Here we Where go. that Michael Parsons? Mark and Paul Parsons. I got oh, you, B. Let's go. You're just going to pay him more. You know Michael you want Parsons. him. Mike is an interesting one because I think <laughs> that. Real quick. Shout out to Yahoo. You know someone she stole this point. I'm, 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 I'm going to say Mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to my Yahoo. Right my girl right there is my girl, Joey. Fantasy yeah. football show. We want to make sure that y'all know that the full uh, link is uh, in the description. We you always find ourselves. That. So uh, just I always do that for. What'd you say, Wes? Nothing, man. I'm just. I'm just you I'm, messing I, up the I, I'm show because you keep talking in the back when other people what? talking. I'm, I'm not used to it, fellas. I'm not used yeah, to it. Not, I'm not used sharing. to it. I'm sorry. Be quiet. We'll get used to it. We'll I'm get sorry. used to it. I'm damn sorry. It. God damn. Get used sorry. to it, damn it. I can't even finish my talk. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. I think right, when I'm not on camera, I'm not muted or something. My bad. Mute yourself or just talk to yourself. All right, here we go. Here we go. My bad. You good. Here we go. I was talking to a a defensive coach from another team about this. And I was just trying to understand because, like, on one hand, we see Micah's sack numbers. We see what he can do. But it's like, think about the biggest games that they had, the games against San Francisco, the playoff games. Like, what did Micah do in those games? And Mm -hmm. I had one one coach tell me when – the Cowboys are winning. Micah's a Hall of Fame player. When the Cowboys need him most, he's pretty average. And I was asking, I'm like, okay, well, if he's taking off some plays, like people say Chris Jones takes off plays, like he, I still think he's worth the money. I still think he's helped the Chiefs to Super Bowls. And this coach, I think, wisely told me, Chris Jones takes off, Chris Jones takes off some plays, but he makes them when they matter most. Yeah. Micah is not 100% on all plays but he kind of makes them when they matter least. And I'm not saying least, but he's not making them when they matter most. So I would say like 
you have to decide. That sounds like it. the whole Cowboys team. That sounds like the entire. I know. I know. When I told this, to- that's Shut a good cover, right? That's a good cover. That's a good cover. That my guy go, man. Come on, baby. Let him go. All right, I let him. You want me to let him go for real? Because I let him go. I want y'all to go like Y'all, Super y'all goofy. dive all in that. Don't, don't, don't let him cover it up, then. I want the real from all of y'all. I want the real from all of y'all. You go get the I'm, real. I'm waiting you to give the real. real. The real on this com- on this right here. I'm um, what she saying? Yeah, yeah. Hold what on, she said from the I, anonymous coach that said that Michael ahead. Parsons. Let me know when it's when my turn. Winning, go big, you first. Go big. I, when I mean, it's let me know when it's my turn. Big, you first. I can't wait. Let's go. Go ahead, big game, James. Okay, I'm first. Well, I'm first. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Big game, you gonna go? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he first. Okay. Hey, yeah, I'm hey, gonna go first. I'm gonna hey, be quick. I'm gonna be quick. Give him the other horn, boss. Give the other horn. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, got, yeah, give me the other horn. I got, I got, I got a horn for you. I got a horn for you, big. There it is. Swallowed you know up. Have you ever been <laughs> swallowed <laughs> up? Have you gone through a time of swallowing where everything was overwhelmed? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, bro, I ain't gonna do you like that, Big. Big, I ain't gonna do you like that. Hey, I got you, Big. I know what you want. I know what you want. Yeah, you yeah, go, Big, go. That's you on there, bro. We got you, Big. We got you, Big. You know I had that extra wrong. You know I had that okay. too, bro. Go all ahead. Right, all right. It's all good. I can take it. I can take it. I can take it. I can take it. It's cool. It's cool. I can take it. So, <laughs> with this thing, with uh, what she said, man, I'm gonna just say this. In my opinion, dog, um, I'm gonna keep it real. Please, we talked about it, uh, Micah. Now, mm-hmm. last year in that San Francisco game, I'm not gonna say that because last year in San Francisco, he was a dog. I'm gonna be honest. He was a dog in last year in that San Francisco game and that playoff game. He was an animal. This Green Bay game, mm, I don't know. I don't know about that. I didn't see all that in that Green Bay game. I saw a lot of talking. I saw a lot more talking this year. I think he was a better player last year, in my opinion. Just for me. Just for me. I feel like he was a better player last year. I feel like he got more Hollywood this year. I felt like it was more Hollywood. Um, yes, I don't hate on the podcast, but you know what? I don't I don't like it because as soon as you leave, as soon as the game is over, you lost to the Packers. You and CD on there talking about, yeah, we need to step up and be better leaders. What? <laughs> what the hell you just say, dog? After the game is over, now you talking about you need to be better leaders and stuff, bro? I ain't, I ain't hearing that. <laughs> so I feel like he is more Hollywood, and I feel like when it does matter, when we got them big, big games, sometimes – he get in his feelings, and when he get in his feelings, he takes himself out the game, and when he takes himself out the games, it hurts the team. You get what I'm saying? And so, yes, I do believe that, and I believe that he gets real emotional and that he needs to be a better leader on the field because when we was losing that game, why ain't he getting all the troops together and saying, hey, man, come on, y'all, what the hell is going on here? We need to step up and be better. I don't hear him doing that. I see him sulking. I see him shrugging his shoulders. I see him doing all that other stuff. And then after the game is over, I already hear him saying, I need to be better. Man, F all that. So, yeah, I'm agree uh, uh, about about 75% with that. So, so what if y'all don't like it? I still love you, Micah. <laughs> Wiss, you up next, bro. Wiss, what's your thought? Listen to me. You, can't, you cannot fight the numbers. And the numbers say in the last two years, Micah Parsons has about three sacks between weeks 11 through 17. And that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? That cannot be. That cannot be. That's a factual statement. You know what I'm saying? I might be off by number here or there. But I will say this. You know, what are y'all expecting Micah Parsons to do in these big games? Because I'm going to be honest with you. In every big game that I've seen the Dallas Cowboys, I ain't seen no quarterback air us out. I ain't seen no quarterback go drop 450 on us or nothing like that where Mike, where they dropping back 35 times. In big games, you know what I see teams doing? Running the damn ball on our ass. So I'm going to tell you what happens in big games. In big games, you know what teams say? Hey, man, they got this guy named Micah Parsons. Maybe we shouldn't throw the ball 40 times because they're going to line him up all over the place. And you know what? He'll probably take the game over. So how about we do what the film actually says and do what? Run the football. You know what I'm saying? In these big games, teams are not throwing the ball on us like that. Think about this. You still have Trevon. You mean, you still have the, the best secondary damn near in all of football. So even if they were getting past Micah Parsons, what was your secondary doing? Teams are not in the big games. In the When teams really want to beat the Dallas Cowboys, you know what they do? They run the football because that's what the film says that you can guarantee. Wait, listen to me. It really doesn't matter who you are. 
if you run the football on the Dallas Cowboys, there's a really good chance you're going to beat them. Why? Because we had, what did Jordan Love say? Jordan Love said, man, you guys had like DBs playing linebacker, right? <laughs> That's what Jordan Love yeah. knew going into the game. So it's like, I don't know. I don't think that like, even if Michael would have had five sacks versus Jordan Love uh, in that Green Bay game, I don't think we win that game still. I still don't think we win that game. Sacks. Oh, that would have made a big difference. You know, I don't want to hear that. So then my question is this. So what happens to Aaron Jones? My question is this. What happens to Aaron Jones? Listen, hold on. Hold on. Listen. My question is this. What happens to that five and a half yards that they were rushing on? Listen, they only ripped through the ball on because they, they wanted to. But they were getting almost six is yards Mike on great the ground. Is Micah great in the run game? Wes? Wes, is Micah a great in the run game? But this is the thing. He can only be one place. In yes the run game. No. In the run game. Yes listen, no. if I run I'm the ball, you, I can if take If they run Michael right Parsons. at him, if they run right Why at him, why would you run at Mike? Is he but, stopping that run? But James, this is the I'm question. Saying the team. If I'm, I'm if, saying listen this. to me. If I know, but this that's not this. Hold on. I'm not going to answer that question because that's a rhetorical question. Because if <laughs> I'm an offensive team. That was a straight team, up question. No, that was <laughs> no, 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 no. That's let a straight up question. I asked you, is he good against the run? Yes or no? Is Mike Yes or no? Yeah, he's good against the run. Mike is good against. Yes, he nah. is. He can tackle against the run. Yes, he can. But this is what I'm now back to my point. Because remember, you inter, I, I was just trying to say mine. So this is what I'm saying, James. If you're in okay. offense, if you're in offense, and you know the dynamics of Micah Parsons, your first goal is to what? To get him out of the game. You're gonna circle him on a piece of paper. How do we get him out of the game? You know what you do? You go away from him, and that's what teams. If you go look at the Green Bay game, they were running. Micah even said it. Like, like, listen, Mike is they one of those players. They ran at him in that Green Bay game, dog. They no, they did not. You know, they, they did. I'm telling you, they did. No, 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 no. I looked at uh, the you film. Yes, they did. Me, James. All right, James, I'm going to interrupt you if you say something that's James. crazy. <laughs> James, the film says this. This is what Wait. the film shows. <laughs> that's what the film says. The film says, bro, that's big, crazy. You know what the film says? I put, I put it to you like this. I put it to you like this. The film says this. They ran Aaron Jones as a blocker without a football at him. Go look at that on film, and that's what they did. Hey, you can. I mean, argue with the film. They were not running a running back at what at Micah Parsons trying to get him to tackle it. No, they were. Even Aaron Jones said it in his interview. They were running Aaron Jones without a running back at Micah Parsons. That's what they were meaning. That's a blocker, bro. That's a blocker. That's not a running back. What? That's what they did, and that's what they did. They basically kept him contained with a player every play. Every play, Micah Parsons had someone in his face. And guess what happens, fellas? That's what happens when you, that's what happens when you're a good player. Just like with Michael Jordan. When my, J Michael Jordan got so good, at some point, you just got to learn how to be double team. Why? Because they're going to double team you every play. And guess what? If, and that's what I told. And that's what I said last year when Michael Parsons complained about getting double teamed so much. I said, "Well, bro, guess what? That's the downfall of being a good player. What you going to do? You got to learn how to beat the double team, or you're not going to be a good player anymore." I'm, and, and listen, I'm not giving no excuses for Micah, but what I'm saying is this. As the season goes along, teams don't want to throw the ball on the Cowboys. Want to know why? Because you got Bland with five interceptions, bro. Five interceptions for touchdowns. Teams are already saying if we don't, if Micah don't get us, freaking Dick, Bland's going to get us. So teams are more adamant to run the ball. And guess what? That's why you hear Stephen Jones saying the two things that I've been having on hats for the last two years. The, the Cowboys are saying this, we got to run the ball more, and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, we got to be able to stop the run more. They're not talking about nothing in the past game because we're not losing games because of quarterbacks. We're losing games because they're handing the ball off to running backs, and we can't stop that. And when you get a Lamar Jackson coming to Dallas, oh, my God, bro. So, Lamar uh, Jackson and Derrick Henry coming to Dallas? Oh, no, we ain't feel to switch to that topic. Uh Tuck, we've been hogging from you, big dog. And Law, we ain't gonna, we, you, you gotta get my on bad, this Tuck. too, Law. You gotta get on this My bad, Law, too, my bro. bad, Tuck. No, no, no. no, 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 no just my, just my, real my, quick, my, though, my, before you go, like, real quick, before you all go, I ask. big. I'm always with the shit, bro. You feel uh, me? Like, when you, hey, I'm with the fights. Yeah. I'm with it. <laughs> I, I love it. I just. Oh, I'm cool. I'm sorry. I apologize. For what? That's what makes the what show, bro. Because I know it's real. That's a that's a big psych. I just be him. I'm just being. <laughs> I ain't apologizing. Go ahead. Talk. Go ahead. I love fights, bro. I love fights, bro. I'm telling you, I love these real fights, man. For real, real talk. Go so, ahead, Tuck. I'm sorry. So, 
my my pushback, and I slightly agree with both a little bit, but I kind of lean towards more what West Coast is saying because if you think about it, what big games that people are talking about do we actually have to lead offensively? Like, give okay. me an example. I think I think that what also is the way this team been built for the last three years, our offense been our defense. Right. So in games where our offense plays well and the, the opposing offense is trailing and they're sitting back passing, that's when Micah is at his best. That's typically when we're winning. But when teams can sit back, just like Buffalo, right, and run the ball down our throat, that's always been our Achilles heel. Now, I remember vividly, Law, you was the main one of it that spoke before, like the Buffalo game. We was all yeah. talking about, let's move Micah around. Let's yeah. have him play a little bit more linebacker so you can't locate him. Now, if you tell me that you're going to do that with Micah, I feel like he's much better at the run game. But if you're going to sit there and just park him on the right edge or the left end where teams can slide protect and they can chip like Wes was saying and, and, and double team him, they're going to run right down. That is not Micah's game. That's nice. not Micah's game. That's not his game. So, you know, when it comes to Micah, do I think it's an ability thing while he wasn't showing up in, in, in big games? No. I think it's Dan Quinn not putting in the best best situations to do what actually he's capable of doing. Me personally. You know what I'm saying? But in the Green Bay game, they did run at him. I can a feel lot. that. He also run away. You know what I'm saying? But it's like he's not he's not built to be an edge guy. That. He's not built for that. So teams got smart and like, this is your best player defensive disruptor over here, but we're going to chip him. We're going to wear him down. We're going to dirty him up and muddy him up. Every play. And Mike visually gets frustrated uh -huh. because he's getting taken out the game. So uh -huh. I think that Dan Quinn did a poor yeah. job of recognizing, and we all saw it. We were talking about after the Buffalo game, I agree. move him around. And then what did they do? After the, the Dolphins game on Christmas, they moved him around. He had a much better game, but then he went right back to the same old, same old in the playoffs. So I think it's a little bit more about the scheme, but you know, honestly, when it comes to the Micah situation, contract season, bro, just contract. Yep, season. That's what it is. Yep. <laughs> that's all it is, bro. Contract season. Here's the thing. Here's the, here's contract the part. Here's season. The that's alert, Cowboys is, Nation. The fun part's really going to happen because he thinks he's getting away with it. Nope. Nah, CD, you gonna get clipped too, bro. Yep, it's coming CD, for you. Yeah. See, clip. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, just wait a minute. You know, saying they ain't, they ain't got nothing on CD yet, but they're gonna be like, well, his body language and you know, he's just not the you know, yeah. <laughs> it just comes to territory because I had this conversation. And this is what this tweet is showing. I told boss this was coming weeks ago because I got yep. a few phone calls yep. and they were telling me in house that the setup is already in on my yeah. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like I traded it, dude, bro. And when what would you say, Wes? Man, I'm know? just put Nothing. Let me turn my microphone off. Let me turn my microphone no, no, off. Turn nope. your microphone. No, 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 no. Let me turn my microphone off. off. No, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, but that that's the conversation, right? So it's like but the funny thing is the things that I was hearing in house about Micah Parsons. Would when I trade? clicked on this Kevin Gray interview and Jory started speaking, it was word for word, for word. bar for bar. Like bar it was long about what long. you told like, me to. Bro, it was exactly what I told you. It was exactly yeah. what I told you that I knew was coming down the pipeline. And here it was, and I'm just like, here they go. You know what I'm saying? So yep. it just is what it is. Am I concerned about Micah? Absolutely not. I just think that if you're going to be think viewing him as a defensive end, and that's where he's going to play, then he's going to be getting double teamed and tripped and slide protect throughout his entire career. He's going to know how to deal with that, but you're going to have to move him around. But you know what I'm saying? When I, when I saw it, I was just like, yeah. You know what I'm hey, you know, you know what? I'm going to tell you a funny. I'm going to tell you to play. Tell y'all, boss will tell y'all. It's really line by like you was swore that Jory had my our phone conversation recorded because everything I said the same exact way. I got you. you know what I'm real quick. Hey, think about this. Hold on, Wes, what if the Cowboys? Hold on, Wes, just real quick. So, first of all, my boy said, "Drive it down, me, <laughs> boy. You wild, boy. That boy Nate been going hard on us." <laughs> 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 they been killing us bees, bro. They chill out, bro. <laughs> they been killing us. Hey, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna give my take on it, and then uh, we, then Wes, you got it. Law two? No, yeah, law last. Y yeah, yeah, well, yeah, go. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, real quick. Hold on, y'all. Give me one second. Some in my ear. Okay, I have to get rid of it. All right, I got it now. So I think it's just as simple as what it is. It's contract season. Uh, it's that time to where we all knew this. Any imperfections is going to be highlighted. It's just what it is. 
Yeah. I guarantee if you compare Michael Parsons to other players, you're going to see similar stuff. You know, I'm not saying he ain't got stuff to work on because I would be the first to say he does. I will say for sure, I graded every one of his plays on the Green Bay game. And I will say for a fact that he played a really good first half in terms of effort and his effort weaned as the game went on. I, I want him to do better there, but I'm also going to be fair to him and say, and I know that this is nitpicking. This is all about nitpicking and trying to get another one of our better players for us to talk about them and try to get them up out of here. I, mm -hmm. I think it's goofy as hell. Like for instance, some people so athletically gifted that even if they got some maturity issues, they're worth the wait. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're right. worth the wait and bars need to get off of the goofiness. This is expected though. Like, and this is not going to stop because it's other things about his game. Right. That's right. not right. perfect. It's other right. things right. that as a player, he right. still right. also. Right. <laughs> 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 Wes, man, even when you're not on camera, we can still hear you, bro. Yes, uh, you were wired up. <laughs> Y'all ain't never gonna have me back on the show, man. My bad, bro. I'm over here writing my. Go ahead, Wes. Uh, uh, man, I'm not. I'm. I wasn't. I was writing thoughts down, bro. My bad. I'm just writing my thoughts down. So like, I'm like, like, I'll be, like Jerry, I'll be staying my thoughts. That's how I be staying. <laughs> Or doodly like Jerry. Go ahead, Wes. <laughs> bro, I'm over here feeling like the KFC lady, bro. After the, after a long shift, and I'm cooking them sandwiches, bro. When them sandwiches came out, it blew the whole hood up, bro. We was working 15, 18 hours making putting them sandwiches out, man. But um, I just, man, I don't, my man, I was just, my thought I was writing down is just like, bro, what if the Dallas Cowboys literally let Dak walk, then next year trade Michael Parsons to get a quarterback? <laughs> Think about this. Micah Parsons, in order to make him to give him one of the higher paid to give him the highest paid defensive player, you're gonna have to give him about thirty million dollars. To give him the high on APA. That's thirty million dollars is not very far away from what you trying to pay Dak Prescott. You just gave Dak Prescott thirty million dollars to be a quarterback like two years ago, and you resented that. There's no way on God's green earth that Micah Parsons, a defensive player, and they don't even cut for defensive players like that in Dallas because they don't serve jerseys like that. There's no way that they're going to give Micah Parsons a quarterback number. So for me, like the 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 writing the writing is on the wall for Micah Parsons right now. Micah Parsons is the greatest the greatest asset that the Cowboys have ever known that we've had that the rest of the NFL values. Brad, I think next year with Dak leaves. I think I'll keep it real. I think they're going to be looking for someone who got two first round picks that's willing to pay Micah Parsons and get him up out of here. I'm going to be honest with you. And like, you got to think like this, Micah Parsons in that podcast, even though the Cowboys say, oh, it doesn't bother them. It do. I know it do. I know it do. So my question for the Cowboys is if you're not willing to give a quarterback what he's willing to pay, there's no way Micah Parsons is going to be a cowboy. It just, it just, it doesn't make it doesn't right now. And then think about this: if you don't have a good team, why do you need a thirty million dollar defensive player to do what? You, you, you're, you don't have an offense. Like what? Why do sacks matter? Why do sacks matter? Sacks only matter if you're winning. Miles Garrett been on a bunch of bad teams getting sacks, and guess what? Nobody cared. Nobody cared. He got on a good team, got some sacks. Guess what? He did? got got calculated. So that's all I'm saying. Like, this might be the beginning of the end for the Dallas Cowboys as far as these super players, unless we can find these kids in the draft, man. Hey, mm. uh, Law, now, okay, you heard from us, Law. Well, uh, I, I will say this, though, with, with Parsons, I, I get it. I, I can see the contract thing and the conspiracy part of that. I can really see that uh, in its full, full, full value there. Uh, and, and Coach Ma have been sending me information about how the Cowboys are strapped for cash and they are pretty much <laughs> rich poor. You know what I'm saying? They're they rich broke. So that's another thing. Uh, I, I would say here with Parsons, I, I think that he will be an off-ball, great tackling machine, hook to flat. He would have been able to stop some of those pursuits of run. So just like what y'all said, you know, players need linebackers behind them in order 
to be good run stoppers. Both of the Bosa bros, they are not good at run stopping. Joey Bosa, Nick, mm -hmm. Nicky Bosa, they're not good at stopping the run. Yeah. You can run right at them. You show and them that pay. dude, both of them, I believe, getting paid Bitcoins, big Bad money. Rush. But they got a linebacker to feel behind them. So now yeah. you got Parsons, who's about 30 pounds lighter than those boys or however, and he's on the edge. What do you think? You know? So he's a guy that I foresee with Mike Zim hopefully he will be able to talk to him get him playing right and get your ass out there contain the damn ball this is why we do it <laughs> i hope mike zim will, will be able to do that and let michael parsons in these big games say okay all right i got you you only gonna rush the quarterback on third downs but first and second down we need for you to play linebacker mixed right. in with Eric Kendricks, right? Or whoever else we draft, a uh, Hope Overstone can turn the corner, and that's how you can get impact tangibly with Parsons. I don't care what that little chart graph that he showed uh, up on his Twitter page. That don't really give me nothing <laughs> mm. because even within the confines of that list, they got Dexter Lawrence somewhere high on impactful plays, but we don't need that. I need more. If y'all talking about what DPF, Dak Prescott fault is all about, then we need right. to have an MPF because with this being said, when we start talking about the last four playoff games that Parsons been in, hey, he's generational talent, but he only got one sack. I, he I only got one sack in the last four playoff games that we were in, whether we won or lost or what have you. So I'm saying this with Parsons, use him as that off-ball linebacker, let him go hook the flat, let him shoot through A gap, B gap, let Sam Williams play on the edge, go draft another guy, go draft somebody to replace D-Law, and let's get this going. But I do get that they want to lower that price tag because $30 million, hey, that ain't or whatever it is. And we can't say that it's only happening because of Cowboys land, because even Nick Bosa, he had to fight for that money. Who remember? He had to hold mm -hmm. out. Yep. He had to go through the scrutiny. And even with that, things was flipped under the rug. People didn't talk about that every day. But mm -hmm. when you have the silver and blue and the starting side of the helmet, every they're going to really, they really going to talk about that every day. Guess who, else, guess who else in the contract battle that nobody's talking about and he was drafted in the first round? We wait. Trevor Lawrence. Trevor yeah. Lawrence. Yeah. He's in a contract dispute. Mm. They're not all in. They got rid of some of his weapons. He is in the they same. They shouldn't boat. be all in on him. <laughs> oh, Big AJ's on the top. Oh, my God. I've been, I've been, I've been told y'all about, I've been, I've been told y'all about Lawrence. I told y'all hey, about you Lawrence. Know. I was never sold on him. Jordan Jefferson. Jordan Jefferson ain't signed his contract either. Lawrence. You know what I'm saying? Jordan Jefferson ain't signed his contract either, so you know. Would you swap who, who, game, James? Would you have Law over here and Dak over there? <laughs> so, uh, uh, no, no, hell no. I will say this real quick, <laughs> and then I'm gonna move to our last topic. Oh my god, Michael Parsons, you have to cross your T's and dot your eyes. That's all you gotta do, because they go, you know. So. That got to go through the same thing. It's just what it is when you're a Dallas Cowboy. Because what they going to say, that couldn't throw deep, so what he kill you with the deep ball. That can't read a defense, so he kill you with limited interceptions. Then he get aggressive. You have been an unnatural allegiance to losers. <laughs> That was perfect. Yeah. Was perfect. <laughs> uh, perfect. So perfect. Yeah. So yeah, you gotta dot your T's and cross your eyes, Micah. That's what you're gonna have to do, bro. Mm. That's just what it is. <laughs> cross your T's uh, and dot your eyes, man. It's just what it is. It's cause I want Micah here and I want P I he has to shut up all doubt. So the only thing that they trying mm. to bring up right now is Micah in big games with big no game. production, which yep. there is some truth to it in terms of the stat sheet. Right. So you got to like, so you got to do everything in your possible. And I mean, if you jumping on piles to get cheap stats, do it. 
<laughs> Am I? I'm not lying. Like, right. <laughs> it's, it's what you got to do because because yeah, you're right. eyeball, they're going to nitpick you, bro. It's yeah. just what it is. So, you know, uh, that's my last observation I would say on joy, and I I am definitely not surprised. And so the craziest they, thing of it, though, boss man, not to cut you off though, mm-hmm. but there's another guy that was like that for many of years. His name is Aaron Donald. In big games, he disappeared. It took mm. it took them to go out there and get a Von Miller or Leonard uh, Floyd. They went to go get a Sean Robinson that year. They had to have to go get a Jalen Ramsey. So they had to put all of those pieces, and he's by far in the last 10 to 12 years one of those generational talent that can people look back and say, man, he's a game changer and all of this stuff, but he couldn't do it by himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well said, bro. Now you said, uh, hold on, he used to show up in big games, Aaron Donald. Hey, name That's the game. I'm, I'm like, hmm, I'm, I need to go Super Bowl. Back. I need to go back. Bowl. 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 I, I just got quiet because I said, what games? Because I, I need to go back. He made two games. plays in the Cowboy <laughs> game. In that Cowboy, that Cowboy game when we was in L.A., he rocked. He freaking rocked. That man rocked. was always recognized. Shoot. He could, Aaron Donald. Shoot Connor Williams. Aaron Donald. And in that Super Bowl, and the Super Bowl game, he on the final play. Remember, oh, he the one that caused the pressure. Connor Williams. Don't you do that. <laughs> Kind of way. You better stop that. Joe Joe Looney. And what year was that for? What, what year was that for Aaron Donald too? By the way, better what stop year? that. That was hey, that was uh, the year I'm talking that. about is uh, the two thousand uh, the, the, the year we played him in L A. It wasn't his fourth. But season hey, but the Super Bowl league. year, the Super Bowl year he did ball though. The Super Bowl year he balled. Hey. He made the final play in the, in the game too. Yeah, yeah, I'll ball too if I had Leonard Floyd, Von Miller. I got all of those boys. Ashawn taking up the double oh, pick. Hey, yeah, but he is. But listen, listen. Did you here reach? Here we go. Did you he reach? Hey, reach. Hey, I'm going to ask you, man. Hey, look. 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 I'm asking you a question. Hey, let's get canceled tonight. Let's really get canceled. Hey, let's get canceled. I need to put your face on her, Lo. No. Hey, look. Hey, when did when did when did the when did the Marcus Ware Shit. when did the Marcus Ware have a big moment? When did the Marcus Ware have a big moment? Oh, tell me a fourth quarter. When, when, tell me a Demarcus had, Ware uh, moment. When he had Wolf. When he had uh, uh, a Talib. He had all of those boys. It, t- it takes a people to realize it takes. Hey, a somebody team, tell me Demarcus you know, Ware in a cowboy helmet. Team. <laughs> in a Demarcus Ware in a cowboy helmet. Tell me a moment in a fourth quarter. Fourth quarter when Demarcus Ware. And a cowboy helmet, 100 sacks and a cowboy helmet. Because I'm telling you, Demarcus Ware got 100 sacks in the first quarter games. And I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not knocking him, but I'm just asking you. Great players get, they get, they get. There's ways, there's ways to to wiggle out good players out of games. There's ways to do it. You know what I'm saying? And it, and it happens. And it's like you have to be greater on top of greater. Like think about this. There's there's pictures of Dez Bryant getting triple covered. Now think about this. People be like, "Well, why did Dan score? Why didn't he get a catch?" He had three dudes on. You know what I'm saying? A great player has a higher responsibility in Jay a game. Tuck's point. That go. That go. That goes to Jay Tuck's point, and even laws that you got to have the right coordinator too. If you see they're double teaming, you see they're doing this. Your coordinator has to have the responsibility to know that i gotta move him around i gotta get him in the best spots because this is my top guy and i gotta put him there so if they're doubling him here i gotta move him up here that's what your responsibility as a good defensive coordinator has to do. and so that's why i agree with them saying that you they have to do that Dan james do you remember dion primetime sanders when they were calling yeah, him dion, dion when he was playing for the atlanta falcons and the cowboys Fine. everybody beat up on him they Come still on. saw talent they saw the skill set that prime was able to have but he couldn't win it by himself Oh yeah, he got beat down. So when he went to the 49ers and so when he started winning, he went to the Cowboys, he started winning. He even went to the Ravens, he started winning. So hey, it takes a team to make sure that you can win, but you got to have other dogs with you though. Mm. For sure. So, he, he for sure. Muted now he talking. Yes. <laughs> Did you do him like did you do him like ESPN? Uh-huh. No, they Tuck, put him on that mute, like beep, on pardon and interruption, something like that. Yeah, I gotta get Tuck in here, bro. Drop the numbers. 
<laughs> bro, I just saw this four hours ago, bro. Y'all mm. probably already knew about yeah, yeah. this. Ooh, I didn't know it was four to six. Okay, oh that, my God. that's why I say what? we got to talk about this, bro. Months. No, I, I thought it was just a little one. Yeah. Oh, gosh. See, you ain't see it either, B. I ain't talking about no oh, damn Oh, my God. Why you didn't tell me that? No, I it's not it. even about six about months. Big. It's about how you like, mm. let Hankers go for two million. Guess who else I, got hurt? I don't even want to talk about because I'm, I'm, I'm. Both I'm, of the Michigan guys hurt. I'm the one uh, that. Schoolmaker got hurt. Schoolmaker, he got, too. He got a soldier. Hold both of the quick. both of our first One two picks. Let last me go season. with Tuck first, bro. I gotta be courteous, Tuck. What's up, bro? Like, I mean, Riggs. Jordan. I mean, Kanye shrug. I mean, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying like Luke School <laughs> I mean, guess what? He was hurt all in college. I mean, you know, what I'm saying we, 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 we oh, just devils, it, right? <sighs> but I think the frustrating part, like you said, boss, is that they know that Moth is going to be out. And they let that small amount get between them and Jonathan Hankins and Jonathan right. Hankins walk over to Seattle. So it's pure just negligence at this point, man. Yeah, and bro, you know, not to crazy. compare it to, you know, real life because real life is more serious than the Cowboys. Yeah. But it's like if you ever dealt with someone who's like been battling addiction, the worst thing you can do when you're by that person's side is see them self-destruct. You know, saying them self-inflicted rooms like you know you're trying to get them to go to counseling and go and get better and you're helping you know what I'm saying you might help them financially but they keep just doing these stupid things to put themselves in their this situation and it's the same thing with the cowboys it's like i don't understand why are y'all moving backwards granted wow. green bay lost it hurt we was all there but if you felt like winning the super bowl was a 10 the Cowboys were at a seven, maybe a seven and a half. You know what I'm saying? Get Trayvon Diggs back, get a few free agents, and sprinkle on a good draft class, and maybe we can move that needle and get to an eight or a nine. The Cowboys have fully disrupted this team where we're now sitting at a six. So we got a lot of work to do just to get back to where we was, and that's still not going to be good enough. So I'm frustrated, y'all. Because yeah. this is goofy. Is if you knew Oof, wow. that your one one tech is going to be out for four to six months, and he's already been struggling with weight and confidence and so many different things, he's not going to be ready. Be ready. <laughs> you should have got him done immediately. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> but no, but no sense of urgency. No sense of urgency with anything. Just let it walk. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Over <laughs> over a few extra dollars that you could have yep. easily made room for. You know. So, but 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 I but agree, those, you know, I agree. stopping the run is so important. You one of your best run stuffers just walk for a few extra dollars. Thank it's, you. It's, it's, damn, really, it's embarrassing. At this oh point. My it's embarrassing, bro. But Man. but once it's, again, Tuck. But once a ten, once again, Tuck. They believe in Dak, right? More for less. Oh well, we gonna win. Did you hear, Jerry? We gonna win with less now. But right. they believe in Dak. No, this is just the setup. So for when Dak don't make it happen this year and he fail, ah oh, man, ah. Oh. Uh, this, I'm not gonna start. Man, why y'all had to show me quiet. that? I, I got dog. Yeah, no, I thought you <laughs> knew. Man, I, I, I swore you knew, but I didn't even see. I it. just saw it four hours ago, bro. I was like, what? This what, post is unavailable. I've, I've, I've even been looking for. It. I can't even see his tweet <clears throat> on it. You know? Yeah. How long ago was it? Well, like four hours. I saw it four hours ago. It was from yesterday. Oh, for yesterday, good lord! And then this, he posted at five fifty four a.m. Man, he he woke up with it on his mind. Clean. I tag you in the post. I tag you in the post. get that out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just tagged you, big dog. That banger. He said, "I gotta be first on that one." Yeah, I gotta be first on that one. Boy, but but four to six. <laughs> when you say four to six months, that means that you got to add. I'm going with the most. That's six months, <laughs> and then you got to go with the time frame that he haven't been practicing, and he got to work himself back into football shape and get things going. So I'm going mm, on the low end. He said he'd be back months. by training camp. Bull That's sugar. Said. I'm looking so. at it like uh, uh, <laughs> <four> <laughs> to, wait a minute. Is that four to six months, right? He said Miles it should be out four to six months. You right. That's bull sugar. Oh, bull sugar, man. <laughs> How you going to be out and still, hey, he be back on training camp, but he said he be out four to four six, six months. months. Come on, and it's a shoulder. It's a shoulder. That ain't method, man. No, come on, man. <laughs> it's a shoulder, what, what too. Kind of, Maybe he gains his weight shoulder. back. And then he got to gain his weight back. His feet. He got so many things. I was talking to your boy, uh, Big Game James. You know what I'm talking about, B-Tuck. 
you know, he was saying that he got to uh-huh, work on a lot uh-huh. of things, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. <laughs> mm. oh, that, head, that's not good. And toes. He said, <laughs> and you know, Tuck, he ain't going to lie to us, man. He going to tell no. you how it is. No. Tuck guess, is not going to lie, he, dog. Tuck, guess, guess, who, guess, guess, guess who flew in to work with him this week? Oh, Ooh, Mozzie? No, 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 B-Tuck. Okay, who? Jordan oh, Davis. Yeah, 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 Jordan Davis and uh, old boy, uh, the, the other uh, first round draft pick from last year, mm. uh, Neil Carter. Yeah, yeah, uh, Carter. Mm. No, no, not Carter. The other one from Georgia. Uh, mm. Nolan. Nolan. Oh. I said, well, shoot. No, I said, shoot. We got either. people. I said, shoot, Tuck. We got people right here, right down the street. <laughs> they need to be there. <laughs> right. So, so hey, he, he said he go to he go he go to the people that's paying that bread. Yeah. Um, on what on 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 the on the training or the tweet? The tweet. I mean, man, like, my my body. Body. listen, bro, you like, I wasn't expecting. Damn, yeah, man. I wasn't. I really wasn't. I was. I really wasn't expecting nothing from Ozzy Smith for year three, anyway. So, I mean, all this right now is just playground work for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. just get it together, and I'll see you year three. You know what I'm saying? Like, year three is when most defensive tackles even smell like defensive tackles, unless they come from. Like, unless you're drafting a dude, like, top five, like, I'm not expecting, you know, Mike, and then, like, Mozzie is a, is a, he's what you call an oven player. You have oven players and you have microwave players. Oven players, you can, you got, you, you know, microwave player, you pop them, you pop them in the microwave, 30 seconds, ow, they're done, they're ready to go. The defensive tackle position is not no microwave position. Like, cornerback, that's a microwave position. You can pop a dude in there, they figure it out in 30 seconds, they all pro. Yep. Defensive tackle, offensive line, that is an that oven cool. position. And think about this. From a, even if you are, think about this, even if you are that dude coming out of college, defensive tackle, number one top dude, you are playing against the most experienced position in all of football. What is that? The offensive line. Name a team that actively puts rookies or young players on their offensive lines. That's not the Dallas Cowboys. The rest of the NFL doesn't do that. You know what I'm saying? The rest of the NFL values having experience on their offensive line. So you have an undersized, inexperienced guy playing against oversized experience. It just doesn't, it's just not a, a good, for me, that's not a good nucleus for him to be good. So I wasn't even expecting anything from Mozzie Smith for three, year three anyway. You know what I'm saying? But I will say this, James, you said something about Micah Parsons earlier, what you were talking about him and him moving around. There's two things I wanted to say, man, that I felt that Dan Quinn kind of made a big fail on with this team. One, my boy Jalen Smith said this to me before he left because I asked him, like, what did you like about Dan Quinn? What did you think mm-hmm. need to fix? And he said this. The number one thing that he that he felt that Dan needed to, that needed to change is he felt that Dan needed to come coach on the sidelines. He needed to be on the sidelines with these guys during the defense. Uh-huh. And the reason I say that is because uh-huh. if you go look on film – Go look at what happens to Michael Parsons on plays where he gets held and he's noticeably frustrated. You know what Dan Quinn does? Uh-huh. Puts him back in the same spot. Damn, you're right. Same Micah, spot. Micah responds, she's on crack. Oh, talk about it, Tuck. Talk, talk about it. Oh, ah, wow. Tuck, you take the damn ball. This is why we do it. What was that? He said she's on crack. He said she's on crack. Let it focus. Oh, oh, he's on crack. He said she's on crack. Oh, let it focus. Oh, 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 it's talking about that female. I'm talking about the female. Oh, boy. Wait a minute, but, but oh, that that God. wasn't her oh, words though. That was she said it was from a coach. She wasn't really. Ooh, I know that's what I'm saying. Don't like, do that. Yeah, but this is the thing in journalism. Right? When you say anonymous, well, uh, this is the thing in journalism. Against him. Yeah, when you in journalism, when you say anonymous that's, and you don't say the quote, you are the quote, bro. Like she is the quote. She could have said it because we don't thing, know. Though. No, she says she. Here's a, she says she. Her but here's the thing, though. Listen, y'all. You know what you just said, uh, Tyson. You said earlier in the show, and I, I believe Tuck may have referenced it. In, him with this podcast, yep. and now you just seen him make that tweet saying that you don't think them Cowboys won't use that against him. Yes. Yeah, Mike is gone, bro. <laughs> he's gone. He's gone. He got a. He's got a watch. He's got to watch what he says because, see, that opinion. Because yep. we, what do we know about the Dallas Cowboys when you talk too much in Dallas? Yep. Boy, you spitting. You gone. Yep. We don't care how good you are. You yep. talk too much here in Dallas and you become bigger than the brand, you gone. 
Yeah. Yeah. Is CD gonna sign? Is CD? Come on, yeah, y'all got me be, scared now. What? Be, be, why you I'm just saying. Like y'all. Everything, but CD it. don't talk. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Yeah, you killing it though. I see this the last talk, 88 so where I walked out by security. The last 88 got walked out by security. That's all yeah, I'm saying. But, hey, that last like... 88, that last 88. Right, but that last 88 was more of that alpha. I don't care. And that's why he had to go. You saw Stephen Jones didn't like that. CD Lamb don't talk like that, so I could see them being more say, we'll work with you. But Micah talks too much for in my opinion for them. And when you talk too much in Dallas and you making tweets like that. They will use that against you, and you will be out of Dallas. They don't care who you are. Remember when hey, T.O. and I know T.O. was older, but you remember when he sat? My bad, y'all. Hold on, Listen, listen. You remember when he sat? You remember? Huh? He pulled uh, he it said? down. My he bad. took it down? Yeah. Oh, thank God, man. Okay, I didn't he knew. Take, yeah. I didn't take this down. Oh, he knew. He better to have yeah, he knew. I mean, he, he should have yeah, said illegal drugs. He must have heard us. He was watching us. He was watching our show. He said, take it down, Mike, please. So. Yeah, you gotta move smart, Michael. Man, be cool. You gotta, you gotta, because Mike, this just Pepsi. started. Be cool. They don't. Hey, like but think that. about this, fellas. But think about this. Can we actually be real though? Why, why Michael gotta play it smooth though? Playing it smooth has gotten everybody smoothly. I feel you. Smooth I agree. Not true. You're right. No, I mean, no, I'm mad. Still gotta play it smooth. See, you can play it smooth a couple of different ways. When I say Smith play it smooth, what I'm talking about is be very calculated in your responses. Yo, be very yo. crack sound yeah. good to me yeah yeah but what if he really thought she was gonna crack though like what if she because i mean for someone if you gotta think there's one thing about this players will only really come out but when there's, ways, when there's are, ways to say it it's some things you can't defend with not that bro. yeah but listen to me listen to me there's some things as reporters and as content creators we need to stay in our lanes too though because i think content creators we like to go into these outside lanes we can't get to the point where we're up here judging guys integrity and they're willing to play, we don't play for dallas though integrity. you know what i'm saying we it's don't play for dallas we don't work for dallas we all play for that he played for dallas yeah and but, see, that's, but, yeah, but, yeah, but guess what but, but that's that that's, that has nothing to do with dallas though that has to do with we're not in the locker room and we're not on the sidelines that's what that means. For us to challenge someone's integrity, that means I knew your intent. If I don't know your intent, how who can I challenge your integrity? Who question is integrity? Who did that? No, I'm who saying she that? is. By what she's saying in that statement. That's why what? Michael, and that's, that's what I'm saying. People say stuff what about Michael saying? all she the time. Was from a source of, I didn't hear that. Uh, uh, Yes, but listen to me. When no, you listen, when you are no. challenging his game, when you are challenging his game, that is his mm -hmm. integrity. That is the Let core of who he believes. Let me listen to it. Things done, but it was yeah, all from. Like, but it was all from a coach. I'm playing. playing, 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 playing it. It. But listen to me. Playing we don't know if it's from a coach. We don't know that. I'm playing. I was talking to a defensive coach from another team about this, and I was just trying to understand because, like, on one hand, we see Micah sack numbers. We see. Let me listen to it. She just said, Trayvon Diggs just commented on it and said, pathetic coach. Listen, hold on, hold on. Ooh. Boy, Tuck. Hold hey, on, hey Tuck, man, let me. Wait, pause. Hey, man, what did West Coast oh, say? Wow. What did West Coast oh, say? Bro. Pause, This is pause, all on Twitter pause, right pause, now. Pause, pause, pause. What did Diggs say? Hold what did Diggs say? Said, he said, pathetic coach. Ooh. Mm, that's they what West Coast was saying. They go where they quit. But listen, let me check this out. But it's like, come on, it's getting good. Think about the biggest games that they had, the games against San Francisco, the playoff games. Like, what did Micah do in those games? And mm. I had one one coach tell me, when the Cowboys are winning, Micah's a Hall of Fame player. When the Cowboys need him most, he's pretty average. And I was asking, I'm like, okay, well, if he's taking off some plays, like, people say chris jones takes off plays like he i still think he's worth the money i still think he's helped the chiefs to super bowls and this coach i think wisely told me chris jones takes off chris jones takes off some plays but he makes them when they matter most yeah. micah is not 100 percent on all plays but he kind of makes them when they matter least and i'm not saying least but he's not making them when they matter most so i would say like you have to decide that sounds like the whole cowboys team that's so mm. I, I wonder if I wonder if you sat Chris Jones in front of her. Chris Jones. I know, I know. when you I told this to someone in the front office, I feel like Chris Jones wouldn't agree with that. <laughs> that's why. I'm, that's what I said. She went in. Listen to me. This is a reporter who already went into this looking for a specific answer. That's why she already had the question. She said, "I went to a coach and I quest. I asked this question. That means she already had her thoughts and her opinions set, and she did that by solidifying with a question. Because my thing is this." I'm not, I, when, when Xavier Woods, not Xavier, when Xavier, what's the boy named the cornerback from the Cowboys? When he said that we don't, you know, we don't go 80%, we don't go 100% on everybody on plays, everybody crucified him. 
Now she's just openly just saying that like, oh yeah, Chris Jones takes off plays. I don't think guys take off plays. I, I, I don't think that, I don't think you get to the highest level of sports and take off plays. Do I think that, that plays don't come your way so players may not do this and do that? I think that happens in every sport, but just to willingly say that like this guy, Chris Jones takes off plays, but then he decides to make the play when it matters. Nah, man, I, your, your opinion is out the window. That's 100% your opinion. Even if there is a stat, because think about this, oh, there's a stat okay. to support I'll everything. I'll see you. I'll see you. I'll there's see a stat to support everything. Final words. Um, <clears throat> so we go start it off with you, Wiss. What's your final words, big dog? My final words is this, man. Hey, man, I'm going to just leave it with this, man. Listen, bro, I've been trying to get on the show for about two years now, man. Listen, man, I was going to do some back alley channels, try to get some dirt on all the one of y'all. But y'all pretty clean in the stuff y'all do. I ain't going to lie, James. I do got some incriminating stuff on you. I ain't going to put it out because you're a real dude. It just proved to me that you a real dude. That's all it is, James. I saw the pictures. I said, James, a real ass dude, man. I love that dude. I'm sure I'm I can dig and find stuff on you. I'm sure I can dig and find stuff on you, too. I'm hey, sure I can dig. Dave, you I'm know I'm just playing with you, James. I know you know I'm just playing with you, James. Hey, I, 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 you know I'm just I'm playing with you, James. I, I did some digging on law and found out he damn near governor. That's all. Oh, Lord, let me back up. Let me back up. You know what I'm saying? But I just want to let y'all know, man, that I appreciate all y'all for letting me on here, man. And my final word, man, is that, man, you guys put on a, a great production. Boss Cowboy, man, I'm so freaking proud of you, man. Uh, your growth, and I'm so pretty proud of uh, Law Nation and, uh, and Jay Tuck, bro. You already know what it is. The Outsiders Unite. I appreciate you. Me and Jay Tuck, we see each other at games, and that's how we love it. And um, big game, I gave you some love. Boss, appreciate you. And um, that's my final words is I appreciate y'all, man. That's all I got to say. I appreciate y'all for letting me on here. That's it. Yeah. Hey, man, absolutely, man. Um my final words. Oh, super chat. We got a super chats, man. I, yeah, I, I, we gotta I, do them super chats. I, I, I gotta yeah. live long in the shack feet over yeah. here. Let's go. Yeah, I'll kill you if you don't do them man, super chats. I forgot my fault, y'all. I did. I just y'all yeah. yeah. forget. Yeah, I appreciate all. I do my final words. They're gonna be up at two a.m., man. I'm saying I just appreciate y'all, Cowboys Nation, appreciate man. Just keep man. rocking, bro. So appreciate working with y'all, man. Y'all know what it is, man. We gonna keep rocking new media. Now nah, you got a bit deeper final word than that, man. Give it, give it to us, Tuck. I know. I know I'm tired, bro. <laughs> I guess I gotta be up at two, man. I catch this flight, bro. I'm tired. Um, <laughs> real quick, I do want to say something real quick since that was your final word. Congratulations, man, on what's going Appreciate on with you. your Thursday. He won't be with us on a uh, final word draft show because tell him where you going. Where you yeah, going, man? man? Flying back out to Vegas, man. So I'm covering um, the fight, um, uh, Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fedora and Roley versus Pitbull, man. So I'm out there going to be covering the boxing for a whole week. So I'll be out there live in Vegas with my guy, Darren Smith. Nice. Man, you know what I'm saying? A whole, a whole nother week in Vegas, man. <laughs> so so Darren, I'll say what's up, Tuck. Yeah, I will, man. I will, man. So we got an early flight. Mm -hmm. So I got to be up probably at two, 2 in the morning. So I probably got like four hours of sleep. So Thanks for the yeah, sacrifice, bro. Good mm -hmm. country. Appreciate y'all, man. man. Take it hey, you see bro. what the Cowboys have done? They got Tuck damn near doing boxing content. This is yeah, crazy, man. bro. This is crazy, bro. It's peaceful when I get to get away from the Cowboys, bro. bro. You know this boy Tuck is tapped out. Madness. I'm like, man, I love, I love this cover something else, man. I'm talking about something else. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Somebody actually Richard. gonna put up a fight for real, you know what I'm saying? So, but appreciate y'all, Cowboys Nation. We gonna keep rocking, man. That's my final word. Yeah, mm. man. I always appreciate it, Tuck. Oh, uh, you got some old uh, super chats over there, big and loud, because I got some. And okay, I got. Uh, 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 yeah, I got. I, I, I got. You got twelve. 